Hello, and welcome to episode 200 <laughs> of the Casual Try Hard Podcast. I'm Brian. And I'm James. And this is episode 200, and we're going to have a very special episode of Doing the Brothers War Previews. <laughs> yeah, last week we uh, decided we were going to split the show into two parts. Last week we did the limited portion where we talked about the limited archetypes, and we talked about some of the cycles. So if you're interested in that, head back and check out last week's episode if you missed it. And then this week we're going to talk about singles from the actual set, walk through some of the interesting cards that are in like the normal set not necessarily limited related um and just kind of give our impressions of them and yeah like brian said this is episode 200 so that's kind of special it is it is so if you want to reach out to us and congratulate us on us making it to 200 episodes putting us surely in the top one percent of all podcasts <laughs> ever made uh you can find all of our social media links in the description below. Reach out. Like, uh, every so often, uh, people ask for, like, I get past people for, like, draft advice or limited advice mm -hmm. on Twitter, and I answer those questions. So, like, if you have questions for us, I will, like, do my best to answer. Yeah. This episode's also going to be coming out early. I know we mentioned it last week, and uh, you we're recording on Monday, and Brothers War goes live on Arena on Tuesday and we're going to try and get this out for you guys on Tuesday. So if you have any, any questions about what you're drafting on arena or a sealed deck that you want some input on or whatever, hit us up. Um, like Brian said on Twitter, uh, you can also email us or there's our discord. Discord is uh, probably the best way to, to put that stuff out there. You get a whole bunch of people's input instead of just ours, but yeah, there's a link to discord in our description. So head on over there. And if you guys are yeah. looking to support the show, there's a couple different ways you can do that. The first is with our TCG player affiliate link. It's no cost to you guys. Uh, TCG.CasualTryHardMTG.com is the link. Follow that link. And whatever you purchase after navigating to TCG player using that link, we'll get a percentage of that helps keep the show going. So maybe another 200 episodes. Maybe, hopefully. Uh, if you want to support us a little bit more directly so that we do do 200 more episodes uh use our patreon casual try here at mtg on patreon patrons get early access to our show notes so you get a sneak peek about what's coming up uh you also get access to our pre-show which was today it was a whole hour of financial stuff some super exciting right <laughs> super super exciting it's like hey did you see that the world is blowing up <laughs> in in magic yeah you didn't let us tell you about it. Yeah. Um, patrons also get put on my mailing list for when I have some givebacks to send out. Uh, the last ones went out last month. Um, the next round might be a little bit late. It takes a while to get. I have to make these ones. I don't have them already. And it takes a while to get stuff from China. So this next round might go out a little bit late, but they'll come out. And if you want to get put on the list, sign up for Patreon, chip in a couple bucks yeah. and show us you appreciate us. Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, and then YouTube, right? Yeah, we also have our YouTube channel uh, where you can watch a video version of this and every episode. Uh, the set review episodes are extra nice because I do a little visual aids so you can see what we're talking about. Uh, but you can always watch the YouTube version and watch us while we talk at you. Um, yes. Also, Brian puts up a whole bunch of draft videos. Uh, every time a new set comes out, he records his drafts and puts them out there for you guys to watch. And I'm going to try and get some constructed content out there as well. So make sure you go over to our YouTube channel, Catch We'll Try Here at MTG on YouTube, and uh, subscribe and click the bell and all that stuff. Watch man. our stuff. We're going to try to um, I have like one thing every weekday come out mm -hmm. we're, we're currently at four days a week <laughs> we just got we just got to get something for tuesday for you then you can just know you could just go back every day and you get something something from us you get one of us talking at you about something that's right sometimes two of us sometimes two of us yes <laughs> sometimes since we got a tag team yeah um is that all the housekeeping stuff yeah i think so i don't think i have anything else do you no. So, real quick before we get into the the set um, review or preview, is um, 
There was a video that Seth, probably better known as Seth Front Olive, put out on Sunday. I'll try to remember to put the link to the video in the description. And where he talks about the new golden packs they have on Arena. Mm -hmm. And how this is going to maybe change some of the math for uh, the ways to build your collection. Yeah, it doesn't really change the math, but it opens up another avenue. Uh, yes. For the longest time, we and I'm sure every other content creator has been preaching to draft as a way to build your collection on Arena. And some random Redditor, thank you, random Redditor, uh, ran the numbers and found out that if you are can only reach a 50% win rate in Limited, then a 50% win rate is the same, same return. Uh, with this new golden packs, just buying packs to crack it versus uh, drafting. Yeah, so basically now every 10 packs, instead of giving you 10 rares, gives you 16 mm -hmm. if you buy packs. Because your golden pack will have 6 duplicate protected rares, 2 guaranteed from the current set, and 4 from any standard set it actually probably gets you more than that because they also count towards your wild card progression okay so like but you're just getting way more rares than you normally would yeah um and they're duplicate yeah, sh yeah and like i've not done enough drafts where i start getting duplicate rares mm -hmm. like i did 30 something drafts and never saw a leyline binding there was, I had one set that I did. I don't remember what set it was, but there was one set where it was like everywhere I picked, I already had. Yeah, I think that like, it's been a while. I've had a few sets where when I crack the packs at the end, yeah, that I'm getting, I start getting like just gems for all of them, mm -hmm. but the last few haven't. And like I said in my video, it is, uh, I put up a video kind of like breaking down like where my collection was after uh dominary united yeah that was a really that, good like, video by the way i went back and watched that thank you yeah. you get um you get to the point where like yes you don't have all the rares and mythics but you've got enough wild cards from opening your packs from your drafts that you're just like uh if i want to make this if i want to craft this mythic i can mm -hmm. right like there are many mythics that are just not playable and so you can just go, like, shrug and not worry about not having it. Mm -hmm. As opposed to, like, stressing over it. Like, so just if you have been, like, drafting because you're like, this is the economically smart thing to do, but I hate drafting. Yeah. Uh, it might be, uh, just buying packs might be more, might be better for you now. Yep. Right. Well, it's might certainly not better be, for you now than it used to be. Yeah. It might be comparable to what you were doing draft wise. Like now, if you like, like I'm at like a fifty four to fifty six percent win rate in draft. So like I'm probably borderline that draft is probably still better for me. Mm -hmm. But like if you're if you're killing it in drafts and getting like you know if you got like a sixty percent win rate, just draft and smash everyone and like take free money. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you are, um. You know, if you're like forty five percent, like it just if you're just doing it to build your collection, just buy packs. Yeah. Well, I mean, we were talking I forget when it was the other day, about how like we had started a spreadsheet to track our arena spending like a year ago. And mm -hmm. neither of us had have had an entry into that spreadsheet yeah. yet. So even even if you're only hitting like a fifty four percent win rate, like you're basically infinite at this point. Yeah, like as long as you get your dailies and keep up with, like, you know, like, yesterday I totally forgot to play. And I, like, opened it up today and I was like, oh, I have, like, three daily challenges. I should probably, like, clear those out. You should do them before um, tomorrow, yeah. I, I did. And trick, if you, sometimes you can do the daily in the morning. Mm -hmm. And when they do the set update, they put three new dailies on so you can get an extra one. Yeah. If you're really trying to min-max your, uh, your gold. But, like, just dailies and, like, gold, like, that's just what I, like, play off of. Mm -hmm. So I've just not had to spend money on Arena in, I think, almost two years. Yeah. So, like, we've hit the point that I think both of us are now 
free to play, but with a collection that is large enough, we can do whatever with. Yeah, I think the last now, time I put money into Arena was for that one Arena Open I did. Okay. I don't remember when that was, but I day two, so like, I guess technically I got my money back out of it. Yeah, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah, I think my my last Arena Open I went like, I was six two and then lost. Yeah. I was like, yep, I'm done. Yep. Uh, but just keep that in mind as you're building your collection in this set that maybe the golden packs are the the way to go for you. Yeah. And they're only promising the golden packs for this set. So, like, I guess depending on how it performs, mm -hmm. I guess if they shake more money out of people, they will, like, continue the golden packs. Well, or I imagine there'd be it, a pretty pretty loud outcry if... Uh... If they went away. away, yeah, yeah, and I don't know it if might they just... can afford much more bad press right now. <laughs> Very true. It might also be like if they just shake the same amount of money out of people, yeah, but people are happier, yeah, that might be enough to like keep the golden packs around. But it would be a super bad look to give the golden packs and then go like, well, uh, we got rid of them, yeah, so. But yeah, just keep that in mind as you're building your collection this time. The brothers, they got gold. Them Phyrexians, they ain't got no gold. <laughs> they ain't got no gold. So, I don't know. May, could they be oil packs for yeah. the next one? <laughs> they, have, they have someone locked in a room just trying to figure out how to tie tie the golden pack concept to the set. Yeah. It has to tie in with the set themes. They're completed packs. Yeah, complete. Oh, completed packs. Oh, you yeah. did it. I was gonna say for for um, Nuka Penna. For Nuka Penna, what was that? What was that weird drug that wasn't a drug? Halo. Yeah, they're Halo packs for Nuka yeah. Penna. Um but I don't have all the information in front of me and we got a big show, so I'm not gonna talk about it right now. But there was a an information leak about Phyrexia. Okay. We should talk about it at some point. So remind me to look that up for next week. Will do. All right. All right. So I guess we're starting on white. Yep. And going to work our way through. So we've got Calamity's Wake is our first card for the set. Mm -hmm. And it is uh, one on the white for an instant. It's an uncommon. Exile all graveyards. Players can't cast non-creature spells this turn. Exile Calamity's Wake. Yep. This was a request from Discord. So what do we think about Calamity's Wake? Um, It does a lot but lacks the phrase draw a card which probably holds it back yeah it's kind of like part silence part like i, I don't know like there's got to be an instant like just like exile all graveyards um is there yeah i'm sure there know. is there's got to be one yeah uh but yeah it's the fact that it's uh a one shot effect is also kind of like yeah not Great, like you would much rather have like like rest in peace. Mm -hmm. I mean, but, it's like, kind of weird because, like, on the surface, it looks like. I mean, I would guess it looks like a great sideboard card because it's mm -hmm. it has multiple roles. You can use it in, you know, a deck where you need some graveyard hate. You could also use it against a deck where, like, your opponent's storming off or whatever you want to make sure your spells resolve against control or something along those lines um but it doesn't like you said if it had draw cards stapled to it like that would probably make it playable there's already a mm -hmm. bunch of stuff that do what this card does um there's way better graveyard hate and there's also like better ways to tax your opponent than than this like i think the only like thing you can think about is like you said the fact that it is like a silence and you just like silence your control player your uh, control opponent on your turn yeah to make sure your big spell resolves but it also like you eat the graveyard against your grease fang opponent yeah right but i don't know if it does either of those jobs well enough like it's how not badly do you the problem yeah, how badly do you want to silence someone? Yeah. Right? Almost never. Yeah, and how, like, again, like, I'd rather, like, have a rest in peace. Or just, like, a single, like, targeted, like, 
you know, oh, what is it called? Unlicensed um, curse, graveyard trespasser. Yeah, any any of those things that are like more repeatable that's gonna make them spend a card. Yeah. Right before they can do their thing. Yep. So, it's on the edge, but I don't think it's good enough now. Maybe in standard, like I we're talking about it more like pioneer modern maybe there's a place for it in standard there have been like those black reanimator decks kicking around Mm -hmm. right like but still like unlicensed curse is legal in standard and probably better and like you can accidentally win the game with it right like oh i guess i made it a 10 10 attack you for 10 and again this is you guys have probably heard me talk about this on the show but i think we have some new listeners so Maybe they haven't heard me talk about this before. This is, I'm going to put this in the same category of card as like the, say Necromentia or um, like not surgical is a little bit different, but like the surgical style effects where it's a sideboard card that you pull in for like a specific purpose, but they usually underperform. Um mm-hmm. I kind of put this in the same camp, like the silence part of it, because you really only ever want it against control and it's not guaranteed to do the thing that you want to do. And it also like puts you down on tempo and a card. Yeah. Like it's not, it's never going to trade for a card. Yeah. Like it's like you're, you're spending mana so they can't, but they can also respond to it. Mm -hmm. So like, if they were like, you know what, you can resolve whatever. I'm going to memory deluge and use my mana. Right. They still get to do that. And they're like, okay, fine. Like, jam whatever spell. I can cast farewell and, like, take care of it. Yeah. Or I have, like, a Teferi or a Wandering Emperor. It doesn't matter. I'll just deal with this later. Mm-hmm. Right. And it's symmetrical, which is weird. Oh, yeah. So, like, weird. so, like, you you know, are silencing your opponent, well, other than if they have, like, a flash creature, but then you also can't, like, then play a Planeswalker. Right. Right, like, the big spell you want to force through with Calam- Calamity's Wake can't be, you know, the new Teferi. Right. Because, like, you're just like, oopsie. Uh, I guess I silenced myself for this. So, like, it is narrow, and, like, I think Rest in Peace is probably better. Mm-hmm. For the graveyard height part of it, or, or unlicensed curse, and well, I mean, if you're going back into formats where rest in peace is legal, like silence is legal, and like legitimately, when is the last time you saw someone play a silence? O- only ever in like CEDH, and like, uh, gonna put on my gonna get my walker out for uh, um, ad nauseum oh, in yeah. modern. Yeah. Right? Like, <laughs> how long did that? That's a million years ago. Yeah. Right? Like, that just not an effect that gets played. Yeah. So, I don't know if, like, stapling two, like, threes together mm-hmm. makes it, like, a five. Right. Right? Sometimes stapling two threes together, if the threes are the right threes, makes a ten. Mm-hmm. But sometimes stapling two threes together makes a four. And like this seems like it's more of like the four (laughs) or a three. Yeah. I have added two threes together and I have gotten a three. Yeah. Somewhere a second grader is angry. Like that is not (laughs) how that works. I get six. I count three and three. But like this different colors, but like Riveter's Charm, right? Mm -hmm. Has, uh, doesn't have like Exile Target Player's Graveyard. Yep. It's one extra mana. But it also has, like, kill a creature and, like, impulse draw three cards. Yeah. Like, that just seems way better. Now, again, it's different colors. But, like, that, like your fail case for when exile of their graveyard isn't good is kill a creature or draw three. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that, like, this has going against it is it's, like, you mentioned the colors being different colors. But this is white. And, like, all of the playable white removal that has basically ever been printed, exiles. Mm-hmm. So, unless your opponent is, like, actively filling their yard for a purpose, like, 
exiling their graveyard probably isn't going to do a whole lot. No. So, I guess the the only time this can possibly trade for a card, really, is, like, if, like, they've got their reanimation spell on the stack, yeah, and, you and then you get them. Target. But then, like, your your opponent kind of has to be, like, a doofus if they, like, it's game two, mm-hmm. and you're just, you've been holding up two mana. Right. Right, you pass the turn with two mana up, and they're just like, you know, like, the either they are dead on board, mm-hmm. or they're just like, well, but I hope they don't have anything. Yeah. And it's like, why, why do you think I passed with two mana up for the last three <laughs> turns? Right. Because I have this card. So, yeah, I don't... It might see standard play because, like, uh, you know, as like you know, kind of like a complement to other graveyard removal stuff. But it's probably not. It might not. It might be like, oh, there's a, I played like one or two of them. Yeah. All right. What's up next? Next, we have lay down arms. It's a single white mana for an uncommon sorcery. It says exile target creature with mana value less than or equal to the number of planes you control. Its controller gains three life. Um, in standard, this is awkward because the deck that is all that is mono white is aggressive, mm-hmm. right? But like, in if you go back to Explorer or Pioneer, one mana Swords to Plowshares, like Swords to Plowshares at sorcery speed, is still good. Yep. And even in standard, like if you can hit like. You know, if you're like a mid rangey white deck, or even like, I think a deck that plays the Wandering Emperor also plays this card. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, maybe you have to make some concessions to building your mana base. Yeah. That you want to make sure that you have 12 planes in your deck. But like, you're happy uh, with this, um, with like, if you have two planes and you eat their ledger shredder, yeah, you're ecstatic. Yep, right. Like once you can, if you can consistently get the three planes, and you're paying one mana to just like snipe their three drop, like that's you can't ask for anything more than that. Yeah, I mean, like the downside. I think the thing that holds this card back is that you're not gonna actually snipe something with this, um, because of sorcery speed. Yeah. Well, I mean more just, like, trading up on mana. Well, you know, you're definitely going to trade up on mana. But, like, this would be, even being sorcery speed, I don't think it's super far behind either Swords to Plowshares or Path to Exile. Um, I no. mean, it's definitely behind them, but I don't think it's super far behind them. No, like, I mean, it is more damaging for a control deck to give you an extra land mm-hmm. than it is to give you three life. Absolutely. Right, they so like, your life. if you're a Teferi Wandering Emperor deck, playing Lay Down the Arms just makes perfect sense. Yep. Right, you're just gonna be like, okay, I don't care. And once they get to like four or five mana, them having to spend a mana on their turn isn't a big deal. Right. Right. If you get to five, if you get to five lands, you can spend a mana to Lay Down Arms, and then. Have up Wandering Emperor, Counterspell, and Memory Deluge. Yep. Right? Like, you're perfectly fine with that. And earlier in the game, you're pretty happy with just like, I will eat your two drop. Mm-hmm. It's exile too, right. so it gets around indestructible or whatever. Mm-hmm. Again, Boo Hooglin, his favorite flavor text on Modern Magic cards is indestructible. Yep. So, yeah, I think this card sees play back to other like back to older formats Good. right like you know if you're if you're death and taxes right in 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 legacy and you're effectively a control deck that plays planes mm-hmm. right is it better for you to give your opponent three life or to give them a land off of path right because they usually play like four swords and then like they might have path in the board now granted path is instant speed so if you're bringing it in specifically to, like, get a creature, you need to kill at instant speed. But if yeah. it's just, like, generic extra removal spell... Well, I mean, this is never going to tag a Merktide, though. 
Mm, fair. Fair. Yeah, you don't really get that many points. For a gristle okay. brand or, you know. Yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. It'll hit a merit lage, though. <laughs> you don't even have to have a planes. Oh, God, you're right. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. This source. It'll kill a though. boo. It'll kill a boo after it's done four damage to you. It will. Yeah. And then immediately they get another boo because <laughs> that card's well designed. Yeah. All right. What do we got up next? Uh, Loran of the Third Path. Two and a oh, white yeah. for a 2 1 legendary human artificer. It has vigilance. And when Loran of the Third Path enters the battlefield, destroy up to one target artifact or enchantment. And then you can also tap it, and you and target opponent each draw a card. Um, so why is this card important? This is literally the first human that destroys an artifact or an enchantment on ETB. Mm -hmm. So humans decks for a long time played off tribe uh cards either rex age mm -hmm. or uh, more recently night of autumn yep and this is allows you to stay on uh the the human tribe and keep all of those synergies so right like if you go champion of the parish into thalia's lieutenant into this to blow up their enchantment you get all your triggers that you would get as opposed to Night of Autumn not giving you those. Yeah. It has a little bit less flexibility than Night of Autumn, but probably the fact that it keys off of all of your other cards key off of human mm -hmm. probably makes it good enough. Yep. It is a little awkward that it's a legend, but you usually only bring in like, so you might only have like two of that effect in your sideboard anyway. I mean, it doesn't even really matter though, because it's already like... It did its job. Yeah, it's already gotten you its card back out of it. Yeah, it's a disenchant. Yeah. And then maybe the draw card text is just flavor text, but, like, you could see situations where, like, if you're, like, if your opponent's stumbling on mana, you're like, oh, at your end of turn, draw a card. Now you've got to discard it, and I got a card. Yeah. Right? Like, if you're better set up to utilize those cards then you could you could maybe use it i think that i think as formats get more powerful that ability becomes less and less relevant um right? i like, mean unless you're playing like a hull breacher deck yeah hull, hull breach narset <laughs> yeah but like you know what i mean like uh it's one thing if in, like, standard you might draw them into, like, right. a farewell when they're on, like, three lands and you're like, okay, it's still a million miles away. Yeah. But if, like, I don't know, you draw them into, like, a supreme verdict. Yeah. Right. Then you just That's kill yourself. Yeah. Right. So it just kind of, like, depends on, like, like, what you're against and stuff. And, like, you can't ever use that ability against, like, a red deck. Right. But, like... It kills an Eidolon. It does. It kills, like... It kills the uh, part of the Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Mm -hmm. I guess I guess it kills the whole thing and just leaves it with a treasure. Yes. Because you get That's the enchantment yeah, you, that you, you trade, trade with a goblin. Yep. Uh, which is a nightmare. They still end up up mana, but <laughs> you at least... You at least got rid of that entire card. Yep. But no, this is... If you're, like, playing any kind of human tribal deck... I think this is just like a must must include like answer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I imagine this will be a staple for for quite some time until they print a better yeah. one. Yeah, exactly. They like ETBs and draws a card. Yeah, like we just make up the wildest things that these cards can do, and like we're most of the time not even joking. We're just like, yeah, that's <laughs> gonna get printed in like two years. Yeah, because like they just keep printing cards. They're like, what if we stick two old cards together at the same mana cost? <laughs> What if we what put uh, lay of wrong? the lay of the land and prey upon on the same card, yep. and just make it cost the same mana as each of them? Yeah, what could possibly go wrong? Yep. All right. It'll what's up next? Loran of the Ford, fourth path. <laughs> the fourth, of the fourth path, and you you can also it, discard it for a white mana. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Simeon, Simeon of the third path, monkey of the third path. There yeah, we there go. You go. It's a human monkey uh, soldier or something. Yeah. All right. 
Next up is Mural Shield of Argive. Three and a white for a 3-4 three three legendary human soldier. During your turn, your opponents can't cast spells or activate abilities of artifact creatures or enchantments. Whenever Mural Shield of Argive attacks, create X-1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature tokens, where X is the number of soldiers you control. So this no. is like part Teferi, part Goblin Rebel Master? Or uh, Hero of Bladehold? Hero of Bladehold, yeah. Um, yeah, so I put this, I asked this to be on here because, like, this is kind of the, like, uh, super, this is like a super Teferi ability. Mm -hmm. Right? It's like the bad parts of Teferi uh, plus you can't activate any of your stuff either. Right. And uh, then it just deads them mm -hmm. in a couple turns. So, I played three mana Teferi when it was balanced to four mana in uh, Historic, or played against it, and it was still super annoying, yeah. not as backbreaking as it was on three, but still super annoying. Mm -hmm. And, like, if you resolve this, like, they just, like, they have to kill it on their turn, or you probably, like... Are presumably playing some soldiers, and you make like three one ones when you attack. Yeah, like it is awkward that it has to attack, right? Like it's just not a rabble master that just like plops out soldiers. So like, you know, a shieldred does eat it. Mm -hmm. That's true. But it, but like it still got you some value. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It it just seems like. This is a card that, like, they've stuck a bunch of abilities on it, and it could just be annoying. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's certainly so, taxi, and we've gotten a lot of taxi things. Yeah, like, Thalia, this, right? Like, you can really make your opponent's life difficult. Yep. I mean, I guess, like, this is kind of like Wandering Emperor cover as well. Mm -hmm. Right, like... You play this, and then they can't flash in their Wandering Emperor, or they have to flash it in before Convac, and you know what's up. Yep. So, you know, it's funny that they're in the same colors, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I will flash in a Wandering Emperor on your end step, then I will play this thing on my on my turn. Perfect. Enjoy. <laughs> enjoy, enjoy this fun game of Magic we're playing. Enjoy the fact that you get to play Hearthstone now. Yep. That okay. deck probably also wants this guy. This yeah, is a... Siege Veteran. Two and a white for a creature, human soldier. It's a 2-2. Two, two. Beginning of combat, and it's a rare. At the beginning of combat, on your turn, put a plus one, plus one counter on target creature you control. Whenever another non-token soldier you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token. So, Luminarch Aspirant was busted mm -hmm. at two mana. Is Luminarch Aspirant busted at three mana? Well, I mean, this also has maybe like a whole nother ability than. Aspiring. Yeah, it also it also has wrath insurance. Right. Um, so I like it. I think my comparison to Luminarch Aspirant is fair, mm -hmm. right? If you played Luminarch Aspirant by itself on two, it was a two-two, mm -hmm. and then became a three-three. Yep. If you play this on. Three, it starts out as a 2-2 two -two and presumably puts a counter on your 2-drop. Yep. Right, now your Thalia is a 3-2 first striker. Yikes. Good luck, opponent. I'm just going to smash you now. Yep. Right? And then if they wrath you, you get, like, a couple soldiers left over? Mm-hmm. Amazing. And it's a soldier for Miral. Mm-hmm. So it like, and it's a human if like that's your jam. Yep. Right? Like, you know, like black, white, or Obzon humans. Probably Obzon because Collective Company is busted. <laughs> um, yeah. Right? Like, this card kind of covers your bases there as well. Yep. Like, the issue is, is like, we have a lot of good threes in standard, right? And then we have a lot of good threes in older formats like uh, Skyclave Apparition. Off tribe, but still um, brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar. 
uh, Redain if you want to, like, tax people. Mm -hmm. Right, so there are a number of cards that, like, kind of compete for this spot, but, right, like, it is... Like, if you Luminarch Aspirant into this, right, and you're just attacking with a 4-4 Aspirant on turn t 3... That's pretty gross. Like, good good luck. Yeah. Like, th thanks for playing. Yeah. You, you better have a Wrath. And I think Luminarch Aspirant is a soldier too, right? I think so, yeah. Right, so, like, perfect. Like, a uh, Wrath you, and it's like, cool, I still get a 1-1 one, one um, left over. No, that might be a Cleric or something. Mm, it might be, yeah. Because that was the party set. Oh, yeah. Can warrior I... or huh. something. It is a human cleric. Cleric, yeah. Boo. But still, so you don't get a soldier left over, but you do get a 4-4 four, four yeah, for two fine. mana. It's fine. Yeah, I'll, I'll be okay. Yep. Yeah, like, human is the tribe that always just gets, like, random good cards. Mm hmm So, like, you just end up with a bunch of, like, randomly good cards that are, like humans and you're like uh can i play all of them probably not you just have to find the right <laughs> the right pile of them to play yeah all what right got next moving on to blue we have arcane proxy this is a seven uh, it's a prototype card the as printed mana cost is seven colorless mana it's a four three artifact wizard it has prototype for one blue blue and it's prototype power toughness is 2-1. If you're confused about prototype, go back and uh, listen to our mechanics episode. We explain all that. Um, when Arcane Proxy enters the battlefield, if you cast it, exile target instant or sorcery card with mana value less than or equal to Arcane Proxy's power from your graveyard. Copy that card. You may cast the copy without paying its mana costs. So... Everyone has compared this to Snapcaster Mage. You're like, oh, it's a bad Snapcaster Mage. And it's like, it is. Right, because it doesn't have flash. But it casts a spell for free. Yeah. So, uh, I talked about this on Arena deck list, and I kind of agree. Imagine a world where you play, um, what is the two mana red, like, new Lava Coil? Um, Something Bolt. Yeah. Right. So, obliterating you, bolt. Obliterating bolt. So you like pay two mana, eat their two drop or their three drop, right? Then they play their next card, mm -hmm. and then you play this. Your turn two is kill your thing. Right. Your turn three is play a two one, kill, kill your, your thing. thing. Like that is like an amazing turn cycle, mm -hmm. right? And with, like, cards like Strangle and Obliterating Bolt, like, you're going to have, like, a blue-red kind of control -y deck where you get to, like, just use Arcane Proxy as additional copies of all of your removal. Mm -hmm. uh, or, like, a black deck with, like, Cut Down and Infernal Grasp and Go for the Throat. Yep. Right? Where you just get to, like, kill your thing, play my proxy, kill your thing again... And then in the late game, if you have some bigger spells like a, uh, gosh, like a memory deluge, mm -hmm. and you feel pretty confident that you can just slam this for seven, have a four three to try to win the game with, and also, well, I guess memory deluge like it would only look at like two cards because of how it's worded. Yeah, uh, would work but at no cards. No cards is based, it's just how much mana how much you spent. Mana yeah, you okay. spent to cast it. Yeah. So, okay, Behold the Multiverse, or whatever yeah. generic four-mana draw card thing is, right? Where it's kind of like a slow torrential gear hulk at that point. Mm -hmm. Like, it's it's not Snapcaster Mage, but it doesn't need to be Snapcaster Mage to get played. Um, I mean, the thing that I thought was interesting about it is the the prototype part. Mm -hmm. Because you could play this in Cascade decks. And never cascade into it. And then if, you know, whatever your cascade spell is in your graveyard, then if this guy's in your hand, you get to cast this and whatever your cascade target is, you get to cast. Ancestral Visions or Rhinos, right? Yeah. Like, turn three, cascade into Rhinos. Turn four, more Rhinos. Mm -hmm. It stinks that they have it the, like, if it was cast clause. Yeah. 
because um, the the less good Cascade decks with uh, Glimpse of Tomorrow, yeah, right, like would spin into oh, what are they called? Goblin Dark Dwellers, yeah, to recast their their Glimpse of Tomorrow, and this could be more Goblin Dark Dwellers if it didn't have the if it was cast clause, right. I mean, I guess, like, you have the situation of... What is that stupid Sphinx that's in Historic that, like, when it enters the battlefield, you get to recast the spell Oh yeah, yeah from yeah. your graveyard? Where, like, you just, like, loop it, where you're just like, oh, I guess I'll cast a Refurbish and get this back, and then snap back my Refurbish, and then get another thing back. Yeah. So, like, that would get a little annoying. But it does... But I do think, as a, like, bailout, I just need... A body mm-hmm. that I don't cascade into. This does that. It also hits your cascade spell later and can just be general value. Like it seems like it's a good card. Mm-hmm. I think it's solid. So, yeah. Lots like I cool said, might have like modern modern play. And if they if they like randomly make other free cards, right? Yeah. Um. Another weird thing is. I just thought about this, but like all of these prototype cards you could get with Karn. Mm hmm. Just tutor them out of your board. So, this card makes Karn the. This set makes Karn the Great Creator perhaps too good. Yeah. He was too. He was borderline too good before, but we're going to talk about like, you know, the meteor golem that like hit the gym. Mm hmm. Right? Is one more mana, but it's like, oh, this Meteor Golem's an actual win con. Yeah. Oh, that's probably bad. Yeah. That Karn can just tutor up an answer to anything that also kills you. Right. And eats all your stuff when it attacks. Like, <laughs> it has targeted Annihilator 1. Well, we'll this get is there. We're not quite not there good. yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. What else? Uh, defabricate. One in a blue for an instant. It's uncommon. And it's modal. You get to choose one. First mode is counter target artifact or enchantment spell. If a spell is countered this way, exile it instead of putting it into its owner's graveyard. And the second mode is counter activate target activated or triggered ability. Um so it's an annul and a stifle stapled together. Yes. Uh, I was thinking it is, oh gosh, what is it called? Tail's End? Yep. So it's, it's Tail's End. And it's also like Trick Bind. It's like an annul with a Trick Bind stuck to it. Yep. It doesn't have Trick Bind split second, but it has like, it is that same mana cost. Like, this is just one of those cards that is just generally like, you wouldn't put this you wouldn't put either of these cards in your sideboard more than likely, but having one card that does both, you might. Mm-hmm. So how does this compare with the first card that we talked about, Calamity's Wake? Like, we, we talked about that and said that, you know, those two things together don't really make a card, but for Defabricate, these two things do make a card? Like, what's so, different about this compared to Calamity's the, Wake? Like, the top mode... Right, the counter target artifact or enchantment. Right. That like intrinsically trades one for one. Mm-hmm. Right? So like you could play Calamity's Wake and it's not like they necessarily had to have a card on the stack. Like the only way Calamity's Wake's getting you a card is if they are casting a reanimation spell and you exile their graveyard. It's not like it counters their non creature spell right. when you cast it. So like it has to be very, like, you've got to, like, kind of walk your opponent into them playing their, uh, their, their, uh, the reanimation spell or thing that interacts with the graveyard. Mm-hmm. Where the Fabricate, like, they, they tap three mana for a Fable of the Mirror Breaker, and you just get to counter it. Right. Right, you've traded your Fabricate for a card. I think the, the counter target activated or triggered ability is more niche. Mm -hmm. I mean, that could still certainly get a card's worth of value, though. Oh, absolutely. Also, remember, Unearth is an activated ability. It is. 
So you can, like, they can try to unearth their card, and you can just counter it. Now, it stays in their graveyard because the unearth was countered. Oh, yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah. I think it does. So it's not... So you're, like, you're not dealing with that problem necessarily, but, like, if it can buy you a turn to kill them or something... Uh, so... Like, because it's a conditional counter spell, it trades for it trades for a card. Yep. So this might be like, if you were in the like uh, market for a uh, a a like stifle type effect, uh, right? Like tails end counter target activated triggered ability or legendary spell. Right. This is kind of the same thing. Except for instead of legendary spell, it's artifact instant or enchantment. Artifact or enchantment, right? Yep. And like those god awful uh, Lotus Field decks, where they counter the the Lotus Field sack ability, mm-hmm. like this does that. Yep. Right. And also, like if you would rather be set up to counter Fable the Mirror Breakers, then you know. Hoping your opponent's on a uh, an Omnath deck mm-hmm. to get their Omnath or whatever, like Fable of the Mirror Breakers. If you play a Mountain, you know that the counter target uh, enchantment side <laughs> is live in basically any format. Yeah, Mountain. Okay, I have a target. Yep, that is really good. So yeah, like this just is probably closer to you know you can get a card with one of the modes. Mm-hmm. If you're bringing it in, you're bringing it in because it gets you a card. This is, I think this is one that you put on here. Yes. Uh, Hercule's Final Meditation. Why don't you tell us about this one? Speaking of god-awful Lotus Field decks. <laughs> um, so it's four blue, blue, blue for an instant. As long as it's not your turn, this spell costs three more to cast. Okay. Return all non-land permanents to their owner's hand. End of the turn. Uh... So they still have to go to clean up and discard. Oh, that's gross. Right? Because they because yeah. you end the turn. So they still got to discard stuff out of their hand. And so those discontinuity decks, right? Now, discontinuity was a little different. It got super cheap if it was your turn and was like six or seven mana if it was their turn. Yeah. This is ten mana if it's their turn. But... Those decks don't have a hard time getting to that much mana. Mm-hmm. So, like, if you can, like, it, even doing it on your turn, right? Like, Lotus Field trigger on the stack, upheaval you. Yeah. Go, I have a Lotus Field now. Right? Like, Seems that is, good. that is good. And so this exiles itself because it ends the turn. Because it's on the stack. Or no? Well, no, because it doesn't... Like, it has to it resolve in order for it to end the turn. Yeah. So, um... You can also flash this back with Gear Hulk. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty gross. Yeah, so, like... You know, you can, uh... Oh! And it picks up the Gear Hulk. It does. <laughs> so you can just like if you have what if you nine Hulk mana exiles though. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. We're not, but you do pick up the Gear Hulk to then do something else, right? Right. Uh, I will discontinuity you. Go. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, you just get to like, like those decks get so much mana, and they just want ways to like time walk you. Mm-hmm. And if their time walk also has you pick up all of your permanents right. and put some num- well, pick up all of your non land permanents and put some of them in the trash can. Yeah, like that is great for them. Yeah, that's because like gross. they do they do this to you, right? And then like the next turn they like discontinu- discontinuity you in your draw step. Yeah, so that like you have to discard whatever you drew. Yeah, and you're just like. 
Magic is a fun and interactive well, game. I mean, now they get to do this during your draw step. Yeah. So, but yeah, like, so it is just a card that, like, kind of fits in a deck mm -hmm. that is, like, just misery. Yeah. But, fun. you know, they can get to 10 mana pretty easily. Uh, or just, like, they, like, Teferi untap Lotus Field. Like, they do the, uh, the, what was it called? The, 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 the green enchantment that untapped everything? Mm, I'm not sure. Uh, Wilderness Reclamation. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And they just, like, float some mana, then they untap with Teferi, and they're just like, pick up all your permanents. Yeah. Yeah, fine, I'll end my turn, but now you have no threats, they're all in your hand. Yeah, gross. Yeah, rebuild. So yeah, it just just seems like an unfun card. Yeah. That, like there's a deck that can utilize it in Explorer and Pioneer. Yeah, I mean ten minutes a lot, so hopefully we won't see too much oh, of it. But ten mana is a ton, but we looked at Nexus of Fate and was like, Well that card's bad. <laughs> and it was seven <laughs> mana and it was just like the entire format, and this is seven mana if you do it on your turn. Yeah. And if I was like, yeah, you have to, like, you upheaval your opponent, but they get to replay their stuff first, you'd be like, oh, okay. Yeah. I I'll live. My stuff's going to be better. Yeah. So. All right. Next up, uh, we got two more to round blue out, and they're both from Discord. Okay. So first up is Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Three blue blue for a four loyalty planeswalker. Has a static ability. Whenever you draw a card, put a loyalty counter on Teferi Temporal Pilgrim. Has a zero to draw a card. So that's actually a, a plus one. Mm -hmm. You can negative two. Create a two two blue spirit creature token with vigilance. And whenever you draw a card, put a plus one plus one counter on this creature. And has a negative 12. Target opponent chooses a permanent they control. No, oh, I can't read this and return it to its owner's hand then they shuffle and each non-land permanent they control into its owner's library so they get to keep one they thing keep one and put thing everything else and tuck everything in their grants and they tuck everything else yep. um this card is weird in that the minus two like is bring the beat down right right just make giant just make giant monsters yep and then the effect of plus one is just, like, dirtle. Mm -hmm. But, like, imagine, if you will, the card Brainstorm. Yeah. Or Jace the Mind Sculptor. Mm -hmm. Right? And you just are, like, play to fairy, minus two, activate my Jace, have a 5-5. Five five. Yep. It put three loyalty counters on my Teferi. Sylvan Library. Or Sylvan Library. Um, again, heck, like, any of the, like, you know, four mana draw twos. Mm -hmm. Right? Like, you do this, you, like, m make a guy, and then you put four counters on it the next turn. Yep. In your Teferi. Or, like, you make a guy, draw a card for turn, make another guy, cast a draw spell. Now you have a giant Teferi, and you have two giant blockers. Yep. Um, it seems good. I mean, it's it, a lot for five mana. It is. It's, it's kind of like Wandering Emperor, where, like, it, it doesn't protect itself as well, but it can win the game. Well, I mean, Wandering right. Emperor has flesh. It doesn't need to protect itself. Well, I mean, it makes the it makes the soldiers and it exiles things. It doesn't have to protect itself, but like it can yeah. get something out of the way. But Teferi like also makes the tutus, right? And like the 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 samurai were super annoying, or have been super annoying. Yeah. Even when they don't put a counter on them. Right. And like these are the samurai in your, and this is one of those planeswalkers where that they've given you something for free. Like, 
every turn this card plus ones, regardless of what you do. That's true. So it effectively makes make a 2-2 two, two a minus one. Hmm. So minus one make a 2-2 two, two on a form loyalty planeswalker is really good. Yeah. Right? And the first 2-2 two, two you make is a 3-3 three, three the next turn. Mm-hmm. So it just seems like you, it's like gotta snowball and like just take over games. It's not like it's not Teferi Hero Dominaria good, I don't think. Yeah, because that card's only three mana. This also but, like ultimates right after a day's undoing, right? Like if you play this, mm, and then since days, days undoing, undoing ends the turn, all the draw triggers are on the stack. Oh yeah, that and sense. then they get exiled. Yeah. Uh. Someone pointed, it might have been like Seth or some commander, more commander focused person, pointed out that they put Teferi's loyalty at one under, ultimating it if you wheel. Right? Like, well, I guess if you if play you, this and wheel in the same turn, then yeah, but if you, yeah, like, you can't, go to the next turn and then wheel, then it ults. Yeah. But like, you can't get to eight mana and like, Upheaval your opponents. Right. Uh, or you upheaval an opponent because it's only target opponent. Yeah. Um, I like, I assume there is just like with this in Wandering Emperor, there is just a like dirtle blue white probably deck that like you're either going to win the game, like it's just a stack of counter spells, removal. Right, we're we're laying down arms. We're uh, a march of otherworldly lighting things. Yeah, and then we're just like memory deluge in those two planeswalkers. It's just like a standard deck, and okay. the explorer slash pioneer blue white deck. I don't think it. I don't think it cracks that because the five mana slot is already fairy hero dominaria. Mm. But might, like, if you have a way to get to that ultimate super fast. I mean, like, the rest of the Teferis that we've had, uh, like, Three Fairy and Hero Dominaria, they're good because they're an answer. And, like, that's mm-hmm. what you want in a control deck. And yeah. then after they've answered whatever you're worried about, then they get you advantage over time until you run away with the game. Um, this doesn't have that. Yeah, this is very true. Like, the the Teferi that, like, got to activate twice or activate, like, on your opponent's turn yeah. saw hardly any play. Right. And I get, like, and it was kind of a temporary answer because it phased something out. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, like, it, this might just not be good enough because it's not an answer. Yeah, I, I'm not right? sure. It's more of, like, a win con. And like you said, the, uh, like the negative two is bring the beats and yeah it is like a control deck isn't looking for five mana bring the beats a control yeah, deck I is guess looking if... for like yeah i'll win eventually like there'll be some ham sandwich that comes along and i don't like the yeah. rest of this card i don't think it, you would play mm-hmm. like um like wandering emperor it's minus is bring the beats but it's other minus is four mana removal spell right that will occasionally just win you the game if they can't answer it yeah and this doesn't have like that like generic because five mana to draw a card is not good enough no and five mana to make a two two and just get your teferi smashed by whatever thing is not good enough either yeah that's the other thing is it super low loyalty so it's vulnerable. Yeah, when you minus like, it, it's like at two. Yeah, and you get shocked. Yeah. Play with yeah. fire. Yeah, and you're just like, oh, well, this didn't do anything. So yeah, maybe. Like, I was just thinking, like, the things that, like, you know, Brainstorm, Jace, like, this then goes, yeah. like, haywire pretty quick. Yeah. And then the, the creatures are really good, but... Yeah. Yeah, but it might not be good enough because it doesn't answer anything. Yeah. What else we got? Uh, we have Teresian Mindbreaker. Uh, cool. seven mana for a six-four Juggernaut. 
when no Tarissian Mindbreaker attacks, defending player mills half their library rounded up. And it has unearth for one blue, blue, blue. This was another one out of Discord. So the rounded up thing means you actually get to mill your opponent out. Eventually, yeah. Yeah. Because it used to be rounded down and it like made it so it was really hard to like round it up kind of matters. Yeah. Um, I don't. These kind of cards never work out, right? No, they're never good. There was like the, was it the Ship Swallower or something? Yeah. It was like seven mana, like big sea serpent, like attack, mill your opponent out. Right, if their board's empty, you kill them before you mill them out. Mm -hmm. Right? Because, like, let's say they have 40 cards in their deck. They go to 20, they go to 10, they go to 5. You've dealt 18 damage. Right. They're, they're probably dead. Right. And uh, just milling half your deck doesn't do anything. It's like, it's the Ulamog problem. Where, like, you don't hardly ever mill your opponent out with Ulamog. No, yeah, because they, they take, can only take they, they, they take 20. Yeah. Yeah. You killed the threats, no, and then you killed them. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it, they can't chump because they will lose their deck. Right. Eventually. Right? And this guy's kind of the same thing. Like, if they have a bunch of chump blockers, you just kill them by decking them. Yeah. But well, it, I think this... So I don't think like, you would pay 7 mana for this. Like, 7 mana for a 6-4 with this ability... I don't think in any in any environment is good enough. So the unearth, I guess, is what makes this card interesting. Mm -hmm. And I don't think you're gonna pay seven mana for this in the first place. Which means what you wanna do is mill this and then unearth it, or discard it and then unearth it. And I don't think that you wanna pay four mana for this as a one shot either. Okay, so I quickly Googled, or not Googled, I went to Scryfall, and I put in mill half. Yeah. Right? Uh, we had Fleet Swallower from Ixalan. It's a 6-6 six, six for 7 mana that rounds half their library. Oh, no, this is rounded up as well. Rounded up as well. Uh, literally saw no play in any format. Yeah. Like, not, in, not good in draft, not good in standard. Um, our boy Lord Xander, mm -hmm. he had a brief moment in the sun, but mm, not really. Right. And then uh, there's a six mana spell that does this. Okay. With casualty, two. And then there's the mind breaker. So if Fleet Swallower is any like guide, this card won't see any play. Yeah. And. Like, Fleet Swallower was was a 6-6 six, six as opposed to a 6-4. Yeah. And Standard is infinitely more powerful now than, than when Fleet, Fleet Swallower, Swallower was legal. Was around, legal. Yeah. So, like, I can't see this pushing in. Yeah. Maybe you'll get to mill someone out in Limited and, like, send a screenshot and live that dream. But I I can't see anything beyond that. Yeah. I, I did... I don't think so. Um, what did... Uh, I did see that, like, it's maybe like a Bruvec Commander or Brawl card. Oh, because right? it doubles it or whatever. Yeah, so you actually get to get their library in one swing. Yeah. So, like, if you could get this yeah, in, you then, could... like, Fleet Swallower would do the same thing, or that other spell. Or but, but if you, like, chart a course that's into your graveyard um... on two, then Bruvec on three, then on Earth it on four... C -c 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 combo nation <laughs> uh but like you get to you get to live that dream in, in a brawl game yeah. and then run around your house in your underwear Woo, we did it yeah but like it's not it's not a thing that's going to be like super competitive no i don't think so moving right. on to black we have a uh, gnawing vermin what's gnawing vermin do it is a black 1-1 one, one creature, red, and uncommon. When it enters the battlefield, mill two cards. When nice. it dies, target creature you don't control gets minus one, minus one until end of turn. Awesome. So, so it's like kind of a half-stitcher supplier, half-shambling ghast? 
Yeah. So I like two cards isn't that many cards, right? right. Like we've we've all played Meyer Triton and been sad by only milling two I, cards. I mean Meyer Triton was two mana too though. Yeah. Um but nine vermin, right, just a, a deck like Grease Fang just wants to fill their graveyard. Mm -hmm. Right? And this like again, can trade for a two two, sign me up. Right? So it's just one of those cards that's gonna like let you fill your graveyard. You know, if we wanna dust off the old um what's he called? Uh Storm Herald or whatever. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, here's another card to, like, put stuff in your graveyard. All that deck wanted to do was put cards in the graveyard. Yep. And this does that. So, if you're, like, trying to find more one-mana ways to, like, get cards in your graveyard, this does it. Mm -hmm. And it also gives you, like you said, like, you know, Festering Goblin or whatever. Yep. Or, like, half of Shambling Guest. Yep. So, just does a little bit of everything. I mean, there's certainly been times where I didn't make a treasure with Shambling Guest. Mm-hmm. We were like, okay, there are times I didn't use the good mode. <laughs> well, I mean, I think everybody knows that was the good mode. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Oh, we gave Black Ramp. What yeah. could possibly go wrong? Nothing at all. Nothing. Deadly Dispute. Fine. Make two treasures. So Draw two cast cards, my make two treasures. Cast my Shieldred on turn three. Thank you. All right. What do we got next? Hostile negotiations. Uh, three and a black for an instant. Exile the top three cards of your library in a face down f pile. Then exile the top three cards of your library in another face down pile. Look at the cards in each pile. Then turn a pile of your choice face up. An opponent then chooses one of those piles. Put that pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard you lose three life. So this is like the weirdest factor fishing ever. It is. So you don't get to make the piles. You're just stuck with whatever the order that came off your, your library. Right. Um, you get to play a super mind game with your opponent, which I'm always down for. Uh, yeah. Like if you have cards that want to be in the graveyard, things with unearth mm -hmm. tenacious underdog, right? Like, do you, like, leave the tenacious underdog pile face down. And so they put the, in hopes that they put the tenacious underdog in your graveyard. Yep. Do you put the tenacious underdog pile up so that they, like, give you that pile and put the other pile that you wanted them to put in your graveyard in your graveyard? Like, like you get to play all those kind of games. Mm -hmm. Um, a, Four mana, draw three, lose three is probably pretty good. I think so. Right. You know, three mana, draw two, lose two has been playable on black before. Yep. Um, Maybe this gives rise to, like, an Esper control deck or... Yeah, I mean, um, this is probably, like, would be considered for the same slot as, like, a... Um glimpse or whatever not, yeah not it's glimpse yeah, it's glimpse. memory it's memory deluge yeah or or like a black white control deck that we had a while back mm -hmm. that was like treasure based where you're just like yeah i just need ways to like get a bunch of card advantage yep. right like you winning announcement into this and you're like tenacious underdog and trading stuff off so uh it might get there, but like in like an Esper deck, like I think just Memory Deluge is better. Probably since you since you have control over what you get. Yeah. Um. But like also, what is it? Dark Bargain from that was like a common. Yeah. Like, like it was card was a house in limited. And, like, this is going to be great. I mean, it's a rare. It should be good limited. But it'll be great and limited. Yeah. But, like, I don't know if there's a deck for it right now. Like, the like, do the mono black decks want this? Maybe. Like, 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 maybe against, like, if you're playing, like, against control. And you just go, like, I need to make sure my hand is full. Mm -hmm. You, like, side these in. And you're just like, okay. 
Like, I'm going to do this on your end step. Are you going to counter this and let me, like, stick my shield red? Yeah. Or are you just going to give me three cards? And, like, that that's a tough question to answer. Mm-hmm. All so. right. Moving on to red. We have Over the Top. Uh, this is another one from Discord. Five red red for a sorcery. Each player reveals a number of cards from the top of their library equal to the number of non-land permanents they control, puts all permanent cards revealed this way onto the battlefield, and puts the rest into their graveyard. Um, so, uh, it is, right, like, Glimpse of Tomorrow, Warp World, that doesn't shuffle stuff back in. Right, so it just, like, adds to your accumulation of cardboard i mean to make this like to play this card right you have to be actively trying to break the symmetry right right you have to be playing oh no you have to play fable the mirror breaker Mm -hmm. well i sure you do you have to play things that are like like generate tokens make extra cardboard yeah i mean what's kind of awkward with this guy is like being seven mana in a color that doesn't ramp you're going to want to play stuff that makes you treasures mm-hmm. but then you have to use the treasures, the treasures to cast it and then you don't get the benefit of breaking symmetry yeah or it's harder yeah there is a i gotta find it so there's the uh, there's the weird uh, uh, uh prismatic prism energy something that you pay two mana to make one mana, so it lets you launder your power stones okay. through it. So, like, you could use that. Like, it would take a lot of power stones. Yeah. But, like, it does replace itself. Yep. And so that is a good thing. There's also, I feel like there is a creature in one of the other sets. So, sorry, Energy Refractor is the weird prismatic uh, uh, prophetic prism. There we go. But I thought there was a creature in one of the other sets that was just like, pay one, make one mana. Aha! Okay. Salvage Mana Worker only lets you is pay one for one mana of any color. Activate this uh, only once each turn. So you can't launder your power stones through it, like, infinitely. Yeah. Um, But you could definitely, like... You know, use power stones if you had a way to make a ton of power stones and then use, like, energy refractor. So, I don't know. You don't ramp. But, like, Um, there's no reason that you couldn't, like, be, like, red-green and just try to go huge. Yeah. What about uh, Iron Crag Feet? Doesn't that make seven mana? It does. And you get to cast exactly one more spell. Yep. But, like... Could you accumulate enough, like, could you accumulate enough non-land permanence by turn, like, four to make this worth doing if you had Iron Crack Feet? Um, I don't know. Could you? You can make Goblin Tokens. I guess, like, you could, like, turn two, like, Cranko's Command, turn three... The goblin Instigator or whatever. Yeah, turn three... Fable, because it's the answer to everything. Yeah, Fable. Uh, or H- Hordling Outburst, and then you, like, yeah, Iron Crag Feet. Yeah, that was the one I was thinking of. Uh, then you, like, or Iron even, Crag like, Feet. one of the Rebel Masters is probably fine. Mm-hmm. But, so like, just yeah. I... a Goblin deck with this now? <laughs> <laughs> like, Goblin, in, like, Goblin Instigator and, like, Fable are better because you can hit them off of over the top. Yeah. Right, like, Hordling Outburst isn't good because you can't hit it. It it seems like a lot of work to not get, like, a lot of setup to not get a lot out of it. But there's also, like, there's two things, right? There's, one, the long history of Red having, like, seven to ten mana sorceries that, like, literally hurt you or, like, do nothing in the game. Yeah. Right? But then there's the more recent history of wizards printing seven mana things for commander <laughs> that are ridiculous in standard. Yeah. Right? So like 
which one is it? Right? Could you imagine in like an older format, like like playing a, like a fable into like a uh, like or like ramping or something, and then just like playing this off of fires, mm-hmm. like Golos, yeah. and like fires into Golos into over the top. Oh, you know what else you could do is um, blood tokens. Mm-hmm. Like if you blood fountain, um, and then the three two black red guy. Uh, Blood Tithe Harvester. Yeah. Like, that's... that's a legitimate magic card. Yeah. Uh, oh, what is her name? Oh, gosh. Um, the, the red-green legend from Dominaria United that, like, you can tap an untapped artifact oh, for green. Oh, yeah. So then you just go, like, Blood Fountain into Guy... And a blood type officer into her, and on turn four, you're tapping your blood fountain, your four blood tokens. Yeah. And then you're doing this for like, and getting like eight permanents. That's kind of cool. Right? Reveal number of non. Yeah. So you get like eight permanents. Like, yeah. Like, that could do a thing. But it does seem like an awful lot of work if it, your opponent's it, just going to go yeah, it's like. a lot of work. Removal spell, Liliana, Shieldred. Yeah. You're like. But I I went over the top. <laughs> like no, not far enough. Yeah, you went over the top, and there wasn't anything on the other side. Yeah, yeah it was just uh, no man's land. Yeah, it was a, a cliff right down the other yeah. side. Yeah. All right. Then we have the card we referenced before: Obliterating Bolt. One in the red for a sorcery. Obliterating Bolt deals four damage to target creature or planeswalker. If that creature or planeswalker would die this turn, exile it instead. I mean, this card's fine. It is fine. It is like it's serviceable. a sideboard card a lot of times. Well, I mean, last time we had this card, it was main deckable. Yeah. I think the issue is that Shield is a 4-5. Yeah. Right? If this did 5, if this was like Roast, mm-hmm. then like it gets played way more because it just gets to eat Shieldred. Shieldreds. But now like they just, like your shield, like their Shieldred lives. Yeah through it so like like it depends on if four is a like important like break point yeah in standard right if uh if four is like where a lot of the spells are yeah then this card sees a lot of play well a lot of uh, like the three drops in mono white all have like four toughness or three yeah well, I was thinking, was it Mirel from this set, and what was the one from Midnight Hunt? Adeline or Ad- Adeline has has four. Uh, so yeah, like this gets the red things. I guess it gets uh, Blade Coil Serpent. Mm-hmm. Uh, the big mythic. Um, yeah, I'm, and like, I just exiles put it... too. So like all the stuff that comes back out of the graveyard isn't going to become all the unearthed stuff. Yeah. Uh, I just, I literally just put in, like, toughness is four or less. Oh, wait, I guess I'm only getting artifact creatures. Good job, B. Way, way to really use that, that, that search, uh, powerfully. Um, but, yeah. Like, it is at minimum a sideboard card. And can, like, if four, four toughness, or four damage is important, raise up to, yeah, like, main deck. And, like, it, you know, it eats a Teferi. Right, unless they zero it. It eats, like, it gets your Wandering Emperors. It kind of gets all of your creatures that... All of your Planeswalkers as well. Yeah, it it depends if the format can handle having Sorcery Speed Removal. Mm-hmm. Some formats can, some formats can't. So that's kind of another biggie. Yeah. But the, like, line of Exile Your 2-Drop Play Arcane Proxy mm-hmm. on 3, Exile Your 3-Drop... Yeah. Is just like backbreaking. Yeah, it seems pretty gross. So, like that might be a deck that gets to like exist. Mm-hmm. The problem with a deck like that is a lot of the formats have devolved into like I just go bigger than you, right? And like doing full damage might not matter if we're just like doing giant things. Yeah, but like obliterating bolt your uh, underdog, mm-hmm. That's amazing. Pretty good. 
obliterating bolt like is almost always going to get a ledger shredder yep. on turn on turn two or three. Yep. It gets a Rafine on turn like on your turn three or turn four before it's attacked. Yep. Right? So like it does have a lot of like targets. It just sucks that it like misses Shieldred. Yeah. It's awkward. Like kind of the like giant like the giant uh card that everyone plays. And then we have Visions of Phyrexia. This is our experimental frenzy of this set. Mm -hmm. Two red red for an enchantment. At the beginning of your upkeep, exile a top card of your library. You may play that card this turn. At the beginning of your end step, if you didn't play a card from exile this turn, make a power stone. So this actually plays kind of well with uh, over the top. It does. It makes you power stones. Yeah. No, they they can't cast you over the top, but right. they they uh, it makes you like things. Well, they kind of um, do have your uh, red green nerd. Mm hmm. True. Um. So part of me feels like this card is not great. Right. I wanted to say bad. Right. Because like experimental frenzy, you could just bury your opponent yeah, by you, playing you like three things going. off the top. Right, this gives you like one, mm -hmm. but then another part of me remembers Outpost Siege. Right, and Outpost Siege was really good. That was a different time in Magic, though. Oh, it was a million years ago. Yeah, it's a million, million, billion years ago. I mean, would right? you play Chandra Torture Defiance if the only thing you could ever do was zero it? That's a plus. It's a, it's a plus one. Was it a plus one? Mm hmm. Probably not. Yeah. I mean, that's what, like, Charger Torch of the Finance was always, like, kill a thing, get the board under control, then press your advantage. Right. Like, you just taking turn four off to do this, yeah. like, can't end well for you. Yeah, I don't think so. And, like, with um, decks now, right, you've got, oh, gosh, you've got Farewell. They just can sweep up your enchantment. Mm-hmm. Right, you've got tear asunder. Yeah, just sweep it. Just get your enchantment. Right, enchantment is a way less sticky card type than it used to be. Yeah, the uh, the only nice part about this card is that if it makes it to your end step, you'll at least get a power token, power stone token for your troubles. For the first one, yeah. So and it does let you play. It lets you play. So you can play lands. So you can play lands. Yeah. So that's good. All right, what do we got next? Uh, moving on to green. We are in Awaken the Woods. X green green for a sorcery. Create X11 one one green forest dryad land creature tokens. So they're basically dryad arbors. Yes, so... Um, my unput-together commander deck will have one of this card. Oh, yeah. Like, this is just, like, get all the triggers with Tatiova you possibly oh, can. Oh, I'm sure this is this is the $30-plus Commander Mythic for this set. Uh, well, maybe I won't get it, because I'm not going to spend $30-plus <laughs> plus dollars on, on for a card for a Commander deck I may never actually put together. Yeah. Um, yeah, like, it's a good Commander card. It is, I think, like... It is costed competitively for constructed, mm -hmm. right? Like it's like it's not secure the ways, right? Which was a white in an instant, a white and X in an instant, but it also like like ramps you ridiculously. Oh yeah, right. Like if like your creature lands don't die, you're good. Mm -hmm. So. And then if you have any kind of landfall shenanigans like Dominaria United Tatiova, mm -hmm. right? Just like make a bajillion creature lands. Scoot Swarm. Yeah, Scoot Swarm. Like just make a million scoots. Yep. Break the, break Arena's token thing. Like that's <laughs> that is this what the main use of this is gonna be is like Scoot Swarm plus this, break the number of tokens you're allowed to have. Yep. Um so, yeah, like, it's, 
it's good. I don't know if it's 60 card good. It might be 60 card fun, but 100 card good. Yeah. Right. Like, if you think about, we have the, I guess we didn't talk about it here, but the, whatever the, like, one red red deal three damage to each creature in Planeswalker and, like, uh, and then, like, destroy all artifacts CMC, or destroy all artifacts CMC three or less. Yeah. Um, right, like, you dump all your mana into this, and then just, like, pay three mana and get rid of it. Yeah. Temporal lockdown. They do the same thing. Right, there's a lot of things that are, like, hostile to this. Yeah, that's true. Right, like, where you dump all your mana, and, like, if this card is good, then, like... You know the various infests in the format start showing up, right? Like the black one, black black draw two, lose two. That also is give all creatures neg one, neg one. Mm-hmm. It's like oh, I have my card draw spell sometimes just like wraps my opponent's <laughs> board. Yeah, neat. So like it's at that like spot where it is like it could be good, but I think like. It'll do fun stuff in, like, Explorer to break Arena. Yeah. But I don't know if it's going to, like, do competitive stuff. I don't know. I think there's but, something cool you can do with it. I just haven't figured out oh, what I'm that sure. is yet. Yeah. Because, like, I mean, like, what's the number one use for uh, Green Sun? Get Dry Harbor. Yeah. It, I, I know in order to do that, this costs three instead of one, but that's... That's what this does, is it goes to get Dryad Arbors. I mean, at three mana, it is... This is an interesting way of thinking of it, right? What if you don't care about the bodies, you care about the lands, right? Right. So at three mana, it's your standard pull a land out of your deck, put it on the battlefield. Okay. At four mana, it's Migration's Path. It is. At five mana, it's... A ramp spell that we don't have right mm-hmm. there's not a five not mana get three, three lands right yep. so maybe you should look at this as like your way to get from five to eight to yep. cast your like city your cityscape de- uh, decimator or whatever mm-hmm. right so maybe this is more of a ramp spell and not a creature spell yeah it, maybe it also this gets is... you from five to seven for your over the top Oh no, not there? land. Non, no, they're not land, right? Uh, it these, is not land. Oh yeah, you can't. Yeah, you can't. They wouldn't count. Yeah, they'd let you cast it, but they wouldn't like count yeah. for as as bodies for it. So maybe it's just maybe it's just a mythic like cultivate or a mythic like migrations <laughs> path. Yeah, right. It's funny to say, but like if you think about it like that, like yeah. Like it makes it easier to understand like what its use cases are, mm-hmm. and those and sometimes it's just like put ten power on the board, and that's good. Yeah, I mean it plays well with uh, Nissa. Oh yeah, because either you have Nissa out and you make a whole bunch of forests, or you play a Nissa and then all your forests tap for two mana. Yeah. Uh, and Felidar Retreat. Oh, yeah. Just Felidar make a bunch Retreat. of two twos. Yeah. So, yeah, no, this... Let's think of it like a, a, a ramp spell that three mana is fine, not playable. Four mana is explosive vegetables. Yep, sometimes playable. Sometimes playable. And five is probably playable. Yeah. Like a card we don't we haven't have. Haven't printed it yet, so I'd imagine that it's got to be pretty good. Yeah, like the only thing I could think of was like Hour of Promise, but it gets two lands. Yeah, or Slam Foot Survey, which is also two lands. Slimy boy. That's right. I love that card. It was so <laughs> bad. All right. So what what else we got here? Bushwhack. The card oh, we this, talked I about earlier. Talked about this. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so it's a green for a sorcery at uncommon. Choose one. Search your library for a basic land card. Reveal it. Put put it into your hand. Then shuffle. Or target creature you control fights target creature you don't control. 
So it is lay of the land plus prey upon. Yep. So what this card can let you do is it can let you shave on lands a little bit because as long as you have a green source, this is a land. Yep. So that later in the game, it is um, a uh, it is a removal spell. Yep. Right. It's almost like a split card, green. Well, it's like green, green get a land, mm -hmm. and then green fight. But like, like that on turn one, that green get a land is way more valuable right. than the fight. But on turn seven, the fight is way more valuable than the land. So it's almost like a, oh gosh, like an MDFC that it, when the land enters the battlefield, like the land enters the battlefield tapped. Yeah. Or the land, or when the land enters the battlefield, you have to pay one. Yep. Right, and like that card would be playable if you had like, you know, ETB tap land with fight on the front. Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry, did you have anything else for Bushwhack? No, I got nothing else for Bushwhack. All right, now we got a reprint. This is Fauna yeah. Shaman, one in a green for a 2-2 Elf Shaman. Pay a green and tap it, and discard a creature card, and you get to tutor for a creature card. Put it in your hand. Are there any the, fun shenanigans we can do with Fauna Shaman? In standard right now, none that come to mind, but this card just does shenanigans. Yeah. Like, this card just is, it would get pistol whipped. Yeah. It does so many shenanigans. <laughs> get uh, target crater hoof. Yeah, get target crater hoof. Get, you know, it's a way to fill your graveyard mm -hmm. to reanimate stuff. Yeah, especially right? with all the unearth or. Mm -hmm. Right, or just, you know, put put a big fatty in there and then. Go get a value creature, mm -hmm. right? Like, this is the kind of thing that you put the what, Luminarch of the Third Path mm -hmm. in your deck because it lets you, like, you're like, oh, I need to blow up an enchantment. Yep. I'll, you know, I have one Luminarch of the Third Path. Loran. I have Loran, I'm sorry, I have the yep. Third Path. Uh, I have one, you know, enters the battlefield, counter, uh, destroy target creature. Mm-hmm. Right, I've got one of that effect in my deck. I can go get it. it. It's also, like, I know we were talking about making use of the discard for unearth stuff, but it's also, like, a a slow entomb. Mm -hmm. Because you discard the first thing and then tutor for the thing that you actually want in your graveyard. Then you get to discard that next turn and go get another one. The, the thing that holds it back, right, is it's a 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. Right, it's, it's a bear. It's it's dice the dice to removal argument. Like it's hard to build your deck around this. Right. If like, if mono black is the best deck, right? Like you can't realistically put this in your deck mm -hmm. and like expect it to live. If red black is the best deck, right? If you're on the play, blood tithe harvester doesn't tag it. But if you're on the draw. Like, you just play it, and it's just, like, cool, I'll trade for your blood type harvester. Yeah. So, like, there is some, like, awkwardness there where it doesn't, like, it's not super resilient. It'd be way better if it was, like, a 1-3. Mm -hmm. Right? But, like, it's an you elf, can't... Though. It is. It is. We do have uh, the elf lord. Yep. But what I was going to say is, like, you can, like, it does fun things. Yeah. Right? And so, like, maybe you're playing some unranked games where you, like, get to do your fun thing mm -hmm. sometimes, and you're okay with the fact that, like, there's a large portion of decks that you're going to lose to. But, like, there's not really been a competitive Fauna Shaman deck. No, I don't think so. Right. It's funny, like, putting this on a body makes it, like, borderline. On an enchantment, too good band of legacy. <laughs> yeah. It's like, oh, I have to like wait a turn. I can't play this on turn three and immediately throw it in my graveyard. No, you can't. <laughs> you have to you have to wait a turn. Not good enough. Can't do it. Yeah. Right. So it's like right at that like edge. 
but it will do some fun stuff and fill the graveyard. So, like, if it hangs around, like, there's not a, like, reanimation creature, is there? Uh, uh Nuthroy? Is that, like, that's not in standard, though. No. So, like, that is, uh, why is artifacts? No, but you could Nethroy onto this. You could make it real big. Yep. Um, I didn't realize that card was still in standard. What card's that? Uh, uh, Bereaved Savior. I had not thought of that card in a very long time. Um, I'm just looking for, like, I guess you could, like, uh, discard something, get an extraction specialist. Mm-hmm. Like, dis- chop a t- discard a two drop, get back extraction special, get an extraction specialist, get it back. Yeah. Um, sadly, there are no vehicles that are also creatures that you could get with Grease Fang. <laughs> yeah, not so much. Um, not not so much. Uh, Lanowar Green Widow, like, kind of reanimates mm-hmm. itself. Yeah. Uh, if you have like enough non uh, enough uh basics or enough creature types, yeah, there's not like a ton of. Uh, there's not a lot of things that, like, return something from the graveyard to the battlefield. Yeah. There's the five mana uncommon that we talked about here of the dunes that brings back something 3 CMC. Mm-hmm. So, right, there are ways that you could get creatures that would, like, let you put stuff, what you discarded, uh, so... into your... Or body launderer. Mm-hmm. Um, Fauna Shaman was already modern legal, right? Yes, I think it was like in M. I feel like it was like M14 or something. No, I don't think it was in M14 because I don't think it was Pioneer Legal before this. Uh, it was Pioneer. Oh, I guess it's Pioneer Legal now. Yeah. Uh, M11. M11. So was so there... Magic 2011 was the was yeah the print 11. Yeah. So. There we go. Yep. So, was Modern Legal, was not Pioneer Legal. Is now Pioneer Legal. Is now Pioneer Legal. Yep. I'm sure we'll see some um, short, some sort of shenanigans with it. Why is it not legal in Alchemy? It's so weird. Because it's not standard legal yet? But, like, on Scryfall, it says it's standard legal. No, that's weird. On Scryfall, it says standard Pioneer Explorer legal, alchemy not legal. Hmm. Weird. Yeah, I don't know. I don't interact with that format, so it's fine. Yeah, me neither. Uh, Moving on to multicolored. We have uh, Legions to Ashes. What's Legions to Ashes do? It's Vindicate. Kind of. Kind of. It's one white black for a sorcery. Exile target non-land permanent and opponent controls it all tokens that player controls with the same name as that permanent. So So it's kind of like a cross between Vindicate and Maelstrom Pulse? Kinda. But like you only get the Maelstrom Pulse if they have tokens. So like, I don't know if we're gonna be copying things, making token copies of things. Mm -hmm. Or if this is like you get to nuke their Power Stones. It also nukes all of your uh, Dryad Arbors. Non-land, my friend. Oh. The Dryad Arbors, <laughs> the dried are, arbors are safe. It. Dryad Arbors are like, I'm good. I'm yep. a land. Leave me alone. Yep. Uh, it gets your Power Stones. Mm-hmm. Like, if if you get a bunch of treasures with it, your opponent's bad for not <laughs> sacking the treasure you ca- you targeted. Right. Uh, it gets Blood Tokens if they don't have... A mana up to sack the, the one you target. Yep. Um. Right, like it's like vindicates good because it eats lands. Yeah. This misses lands. Um, like anguished unmaking and utter end or instant speed. Right. So like this being sorcery is kind of eh. And I don't know how important the token clause is. I don't know. I could see it like randomly being relevant. 
Like, I don't, yeah, maybe it, this is here for Grease Fang to clean up angels after uh, Perhelion. So, okay, we can't fix the Grease thing, Fang thing, but we can get, we get those two angels. So, uh, <laughs> you, so they have to reanimate another thing before yeah, they, before uh, they kill, kill you. you. Yeah. They, ha- they have to play a uh, Rafine's informant to put that Parhelion into their graveyard again. Right. <sighs> Thanks, Wizards. <laughs> um, so, yeah, like, it's in that weird spot where if it was an instant, it's good enough. Yep. Right? And, like, what was the, is it Void Rend was three colors in an instant and couldn't be countered and, like, exiled a thing or destroyed a thing? Yeah. And, like, it being three colors kind of, like, made it not get played? hmm So, like, you know, this is two colors, but it's not an instant, so it's kind of hard to know exactly, like, where it's going to end up. Yeah. But... If there is, like, a token deck and you need to, like, bile blight a bunch of goblins. Sure. Right. If if someone's trying to go over the top with a bunch of goblins, they have the tech to take care of it. I guess this cleans up all the uh, war marshal or war war master tokens, too, and elves. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. Uh, The other gold card we have is Mishra Tamer of Makfawa. This is Makfawa. not the meld Mishra. This is the other one. Uh, three this black is the rare red. Mishra. Yep, three black red for a 4-4. Four, four. Permanents you control have ward, sacrifice a permanent, and each artifact card in your graveyard has unearth one black red. I don't... I don't know if this card is good. I don't think it is. I don't think it is either. So, uh, Ward, Sacrifice a Permanent. For all your permanents have that? No, no. One permanent has that. And it's Mishra. Right. Because yeah. where where is the first removal spell going? It's not going to some other thing. They're going to take out Mishra. Right. If they have two removal spells, it's Mishra, Sack a Land, kill the other thing. Yep. Right? Where it's awkward is like, if they have to kill something else right? and not Mishra. But, like, I feel like they just always kill Mishra and they sack a thing. Now, right, we have found that, like, Graveyard Trespassers, like, discard a card hurts real bad. Yes. But, like, on turn five, like, you're probably able to sack a land after yeah. they played this. I agree. So it's not as punishing as, like, discarding a card like and you're always going to be able to pay this sometimes like um but you have to discard a card so if you don't have a card to discard to graveyard trespasser you can't pay the ward Mm -hmm. right this like you're always going to have a permanent to sack yeah and especially with as many like random game objects as wizards is giving us like Mm -hmm. i imagine there's going to be treasures and bloods and soldier tokens and power stones a plenty but again, like, even your, like, Blood Tithe Harvester, right? You sack yeah. your Blood Tithe Harvester to kill one thing. And then you sacrifice and then, your blood. And then your blood still, yeah, you sacrifice your blood to kill this thing. And you're like, okay, whatever. Yep. I'm good. It's also so, awkward like, at five mana because, like, I guess the plan is that you want to give, like, you know, something giant on Earth. But at five mm-hmm. mana, you that's kind of cost prohibitive to play this and then give something giant on Earth. Yeah, like, you've got to get to 8 mana before you can, like, play it yeah. and activate. And you have to have, like, what is this, 4 black, black, red, red to make that happen? Yeah. Right, you're asking an awful lot. Yeah. Now, one thing we may have glossed over is these activated abilities, like this one, right, Power Stones will pay for the colorless part of the activation. Oh, so so you're down to 3 black, black, red, red? <laughs> hey! I didn't say it was good. I'm just saying the power stones are there to pay for part yeah. of it. But like, yeah, this just doesn't seem like it's yeah, good enough. That's great. Yeah, like there's there's a lot that you can do with five mana and black red uh, that yeah. is better than this. Yes, for sure. Then we have some colorless cards. And this first one, uh, I've seen all over the place. What's this first one here? Haywire Might. It is one for an artifact insect at uncommon. It is a one one. 
When it dies, you gain two life. You can pay a green, back haywire my exile target non-creature artifact or non-creature enchantment. Uh, this goes in every Urza Saga deck that can make green mana. Mm -hmm. Because imagine on turn two, you play your Urza, or on turn three, you play your Urza Saga on the play. And your opponent plays their Urza Saga on their turn three. You get to eat their Urza Saga with your Haywire Might and take them off of their ability to search for mm -hmm. a, uh, a one mana artifact. And you get to gain two life. Mm -hmm. Right, it doesn't kill the constructs, but it actually kills the Sokka. Right. It also, like, kills a Chalice. Mm -hmm. It kills a Ley Line. Like, it just does everything. And, like, it is super versatile for an Urza Saga target. Yeah, I mean, the last time we had this on a creature was, like, Caustic Caterpillar, mm -hmm. which was a two drop. It was a bear, right? It was a two mana, two, two. I thought it was a 1-1. One, one. Was it a 1-1? One, one? Um, so this is, like, less expensive anyway. And, mm -hmm. like you said, it's an artifact, so. Relevant card type. Relevant card type. Like, uh, Caustic Caterpillar was a, okay, it was a 1-1 one, one for 1. So it was green oh, it was. for a 1-1. One, one. Okay. And it was activate for 1 and a green destroy target artifact or enchantment. Gotcha. So it wasn't limited to non-creature. Yeah, non uh, non creature in any way, but in older formats there aren't a lot of like creature artifacts floating around, or creature enchantments, or creature I guess enchantments like Eidolon, but Eidolon, and then some of the stuff out of like eight cast. Yeah, oh, that's but right, like, yeah. but like, this is like, you know, even if this just kills some dumb thing out of eight cast. Because it gains you two life, it kind of uh, blocks a uh, uh, whatever they... Oh, what is he called? The the Thopker guy that... Uh, let's see, it's... Uh, gosh, this is making content here, people. I don't know what um, you're talking about, or otherwise that helps the guy, the, the guy with uh, Affinity that enters the battlefield and draws two cards is a 2-2 two -two flyer. Well, this doesn't block it. It kind of does. It gains you two life. Oh, that's true, yeah. Right, like it, like gains you to life. Thought monitor. There we go. I was like thought cast, and that, but like you know, it gains you to life. It can buy you a turn. Yeah. To like get you an extra draw. It just kind of does a little bit of everything. Called eight thought. It should, Not but thought cast. has a negative con connotation. <laughs> I called it eight thought initially, but like it's it's no, it's eight cast. Yeah. Because you have eight thought casts as opposed to just having, but they could spell it like thought, like the right. thought. Yeah. Like I had a thought, not like T H uh, O T, not yeah. that, not the bad thought. Yeah. Only good thoughts here. <laughs> so yeah, like this could see sideboard play in standard and like other formats, mm -hmm. but it's like just a staple in like any Urza's thought. There's a uh, saga deck that can play green. Yep. Right. So like lands, or even like even eight cast. Right. Mm -hmm. Where like they have Mox Opal. Yep. Right. Like okay, cool. I have my green source. I'll go get this. Yep. So. Sounds good to me. Next up, we have Blade Coil Serpent. It's a uh... Casting cost is weird. It's a X6. It's a 5-4 mm -hmm. artifact creature serpent. When Blade Coil Serpent enters the battlefield for each blue blue spent to cast it, draw a card. When Blade Coil Serpent enters the battlefield for each black black spent to cast it, each opponent discards a card. When Blade Coil Serpent enters the battlefield for each red red spent to cast it, it gets plus one plus O oh and gains trample and haste to lend a turn. So the reason they give you the X is in case you want to overpay for some of these abilities, but I don't think anybody's going to pay like eight mana for this, right? Probably not. So the reason I asked this, for this to be put on the list, I don't know if anyone else did, was I feel like we all missed Hydroid Crisis. Yep. Right? And there's a huge difference between a cast trigger 
mm-hmm. and it enter the battlefield trigger. Mm-hmm. But this is right. It never gets as big as Hydroid Crisis th- did, but for eight mana, right? Hydroid Crisis was like a six six trampler mm-hmm. that drew you three cards. Yes. Right. For eight mana. Now, granted, if it's all blue, right? This is a five four that draws you four cards. Yeah. If it if it hits the battlefield. Yep. If you're like blue black and you split it evenly, it's a five it's a five for one. Yeah, that's pretty good. Right? Gross. It gets them two cards, it draws you two cards. Now the difference is it has to resolve. Mm-hmm. Right? Like Hydroid Crisis, you could just like look at your opponent and just go like I don't care, wind should wipe or tap. I'm gonna gain <laughs> some life and draw some cards. Yeah. Right? I don't care what's in your hand. I mean, you also had the, Nissa making like all of the green mana to dump yes. into it. But this, like you, you have to have it resolved. Like when the windshield wiper tap can go poorly for you, mm-hmm. right? It never went bad for you with hydroid crisis. You always ended up with like four cards and four and two life or whatever. Yeah. Or four life or whatever it was. So I just wanted to bring this card up that like, this is, 50, 60, 70% of a Hydroid Crisis? Yeah, I mean, Hydroid C- Crisis flew also, which was relevant, and this doesn't. Like, it was easier to close a game with Crisis. This can just it it was, it was. But just like that, like, it can be like a, a massive swing. Yeah. Or like, even like in a mono black deck, right? Like, oh, you've yeah. kind of depleted the resources mana, some. Discard three cards. Yeah, Mind Twist, you have a 5-4. Like, neat. I guess I win now. Yeah. I four for one you. Right? Like, I I played a shieldred into this. Oof. I guess the game's over. Yeah. Thank you for participating in this match. Basically. Right. And uh Power Stones do cast this. They do, but they don't get you the bonuses. They don't get you the bonuses. But like, I don't know if it's two power stones, if it's a five four that draws two cards. With two power stones, right? The biggest mole drifter ever. <laughs> That's true. It's a big right. mole drifter. Here's a five four mole drifter. I don't fly, but I just smash everything on the ground. Yeah. Right? Like it just I didn't want to not talk about it. I don't think it's as good as Hydroid Crisis. Yeah, I don't think so either. Don't like don't run out and like spend a bunch of money on this thinking that uh Hydroid Crisis is going is it's going to be Hydroid Crisis. And I mean even Aaron Forsyth said no one plays standard. So, like, don't. I don't know if this is a card that sees. Um, I don't think it sees older format play. Like, Crisis doesn't. Well, I mean, for a little it, while, it's uh, Pioneer play. A little bit. But, like, I don't foresee this, like. Like, if I had blue mana and wanted to cast a creature that drew me cards, I'd play green mana and right. play Crisis. <laughs> True. Right. Yep. Uh, but, like, this could be good. Like, this. Just just keep an eye on it, like, you know, I don't know. If it's, like, 50 cents and, yeah, like, standard comes back, up. yeah, buy some, and, like, if standard comes back, then you, like, have them. Yeah. And if not, you're out, like, a quarter because you didn't sell them for bulk for a quarter a piece or whatever. That's right. Stonks. Stonks. Another mythic. Bro. This one is yes. a Cityscape Leveler. Eight mana, eight, eight, trample. When you cast this spell and whenever Cityscape Leveler attacks, destroy up to one target non-land permanent, its controller creates a tapped Power Stone token. And you can unearth for eight. Okay. Um, so this is one more mana than Meteor Golem. Ten more stats. <laughs> and it tramples... And you're guaranteed to get the first thing if you put it on the stack. Yep. Uh, like Meteor Golem's got to hit the got to hit the battlefield. This is just like put me on the stack. I eat a thing. Yep. And then like the there's a lot of times that the power stone is not going to matter. Right. Right. Like you're playing against mono white, and you eat something. The power stone does literal nothing in that deck. Yep. You're playing against like black red and pioneer. Power Stone. I guess the Power Stone can activate a blood token. Yep. But effectively does literal nothing. Or I guess can turn on a man land. 
Um, King is like blue white control. I guess it can like activate uh, Castle Vantress or Castle Ardenvale. Like it just doesn't do anything that matters. Right. Right. It's just super meteor golem. Yeah, I mean eight mana is a lot, but but yes. What deck plays meteor golem right now? I don't know what deck plays meteor golem right now. Mono green devotion. Oh, that's true. Where you where you yeah. get it out of the when you get out of the cyborg with Karn, that deck routinely makes like fifty mana. Yeah. I right? guess this like, is probably relevant, like in Tron too, right? Yeah. Like the only thing is like it being eight, it kind of puts it at like it's this the, or Ugin. Yeah, and like I think Ugin's better. Yeah. Right. But, like, what about, like, if we go if we go way far back, what about, like, Cloud Post? Oh, yeah. You just, like, like, you just have another giant thing to get with you to, like, like, you can't blow up the lands, but you're just like, yeah, like, I'll eat your, like, Mark Tide Regent, and now, like, it takes a lot of bolts to deal with this. Yeah. Oh, you forced it? Yeah, I still ate your thing. <laughs> yep. Neat. Get three for one, nerd. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I think that this has a home in... It could have a home in Tron. Like, you could build a Tron deck that this is, like, what you want to do. Mm -hmm. I think it definitely goes in the sideboard of Mono Green. Mm -hmm. Because now your Meteor Golem can win you the game. Like, right, like if you're not come mm -hmm? In a hurry. In a, yeah, like... You just be like, well, I guess I'll get this Meteor Golem because it's going, like, it'll kill whatever hate piece I need to deal with. Now it's like, I guess I'll get my Meteor Golem that puts them on a two-turn clock. Yeah. And they have to kill it twice. Right. Or they have to exile it. Right? Because, like, if they counter it, then you just unearth it the next turn and you eat another thing. Mm -hmm. And you ate them. Like, that's just wild. Yeah. And so that's sick. The art is sick. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if you saw the, uh, there was a PK video that he was like, I hate the fact that we don't blow up lands anymore. Cityscape leveler literally does not level cities. <laughs> that is it true. does not mess with lands. Yep. Um, yeah, I mean, if they say eight lands, like eight plus good times, then like, then I know it would go into like Tron yeah. and, uh, Cloud Post. Yeah. Right. Cause you imagine For like sure. turn. Yeah, turn three, blow up your only land, play my 8-8. Eight, eight. Like, okay, like, or blow up one of your two lands. Like, get your Vulk. Enjoy casting lightning bolts off of that island that you fetched. Yeah. Yeah, so I have seen talk that maybe this is a set that gets Karn banned. Maybe. Because, like, there's just so much good stuff for Karn to go get. Like, oh, hey. I need a way to like, like, also, uh, Haywire guy, Haywire Mite. Mm -hmm. Great as a Karn Tutor target. True. Like, oh man, like, they, they pithy needed my Kiora. Yeah. Not anymore, they didn't. Not anymore. So. All right. Next up, we have Portal to Phyrexia. This is a nine mana artifact. Whenever it's 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 secretly four mana or five. <laughs> Whenever Portal of Phyrexia enters the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices three creatures. At the beginning of your upkeep, put target creature from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. It's a Phyrexian in addition to its other types. So this is original Shieldred for nine mana on an artifact. I guess yeah, that's a good way to think of it. Um. So, I'm looking up the, the name of the card now. Uh, there is a card in this set mm -hmm. that is one white white. Return target artifact. Where is it at? Repair and recharge. Three white white. Return target artifact, enchantment, or planeswalker card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Create a tap power stone. Yep. This card costs five mana. Your whole job is to put it in your graveyard get it back for five, decimate your opponent's board. Yep. And it is... Um, what is it called? Uh, oh, what is it called? I'll think of it in a second. Uh, God Pharaoh's Gift. Yeah. With less steps. 
right? It's just get in the graveyard somehow and then jam. Like, get it back. Yeah. Like, the, the difference, though, is that God Pharaoh's gift made anything a threat. So when you trade it off, you're like self-mill creatures. They became like a formidable threat. And, like, this doesn't do that. True. Uh, it doesn't get anything back. But, like, I feel like getting to turn all of, like, getting to, like, destroy three of your opponent's creatures. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, that's good. Right, I, like, I, I just meant that, like, your Stitcher supplier isn't ever going to be a 4-4 with this. Yeah, but, like, you don't have to play those cards, right? Like, well, I mean, now you get You've got to get this get... in your graveyard and you got to find something to reanimate. You're still going to no, play self mill. Your opponent does that for you. Right? You just get your opponent's creatures back. No. Oh. From a graveyard. Yeah. Right? So, you, like, you just, like, whatever your opponents have, like, for three turns, like, that's your food. Right? Now, like, you've got to hope that they have good things, but, right. like, you have a uh, fateful bending. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, that's true. As as a way to like chew through your deck, you, you could play like removal, right? Yeah. Like removal and counter spells kind of deal. Yeah. And then like you count like, you know, you're like sure your shouldered resolves play this. Yeah. Now the downside is is like cards like um, a braid. Oh god, graveyard trespasser. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, that yeah. are gonna like that are gonna eat this before you get to do anything with it. Yeah. Uh. But, like, you don't have to play the, um, you don't have to play the cards that are, like, you know, you don't have to play the Stitcher Suppliers and stuff like that, right? Like, you have a little bit more control over it. Mm -hmm. But then, like, you can just lean on, like, I don't need creatures, I just need to kill all my opponent's stuff, mm -hmm. and then win the game with that. I think that is, like, a reasonable plan in Standard. Yeah. Right? probably it gets less reasonable in older formats where like you could just run into the like all planeswalker control deck and then this card has no text i mean it's it's a fun tinker target oh yeah <laughs> oh whew. <laughs> whew, th like this is a vintage cube card like yeah. the tinker for this just like wrath your board get stuff back yes please yep um it's a so mythic nice or go with my cube i'm real cool you got there be a shame if something happened to it it had to be the 13 13 one yeah otherwise it'd shuffle in yeah boo yeah oh i want to get that back it's but... stifle the shuffle oh. <laughs> <laughs> going real hard <laughs> going like, i got these four stifles in my deck i'm gonna get your fetch lands or your emerald one of the two um yeah no this is like yeah, I guess it is original Shieldred. I just think it's a it's a it's a card that could be good. Mm -hmm. There there isn't there's only the one reanimation tar the one reanimation spell repair and recharge in standard. Yeah. Well, no. And there's uh there's one in Kamigawa. It returns an artifact. I think so. Not it returned a vehicle. I uh. There was one. The oh, oh, sorry. I'm only I'm only looking at I'm looking at the Set Brothers War. I need to look at all of standard. Uh one second. Uh legal. Uh in future standard. Alright, so let's see here. Uh there's Brilliant Restoration, which costs seven. Um there is... It reanimates lots of things, though. It does. It does. Uh, graveyard Shift? No. I know what card you're talking about. Uh, no, so... Okiba Salvage returns target creature or vehicle card oh, okay. from your graveyard to the battlefield. So it, does, it doesn't return just an artifact. It returns a, yeah. a vehicle. So you gotta make um, this vehicle somehow. There we go. We gotta, gotta get under back. the hood. Yeah, get Tezru will like absorb this thing into his other arm and then like he can just hop on his back. You just you just ride have to him stick into battle. A, you have to stick a grease fang on his back. Yeah. 
Um, <clears throat> I was thinking that, um, right, like, you were worried about having ways to, like, interact with, like, to actually have creatures. Mm -hmm. So, like, I had played, I put a video up, uh, back when Kamigawa came out with, um, uh, oh, okay, I got it. But, so there is, um, like, you could Brilliant Restoration, Colossal Sky Turtle kind of shenanigans. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, where you're using the Sky Turtle to, like, interact with your opponent, but now you have stuff in your graveyard. The other card we want is, we want Invoke Justice. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking of. Yeah, Return Target Permanent card from your graveyard. So yeah. you have, an, it's like you have one, two wait, five mana... Yeah, you have yeah. two five mana reanimation spells in white. So this... This only costs five. Well, I, so I then mean, that you... does a lot for five. Oh, it does a ton. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, is like, then you can, like, you could have Sky Turtle as a way to, like, put things in your graveyard that you want them to get back. Right? And, like, so you're kind of, like, blue-white base, and then you have a little bit of green for, like, you know, if you need to use, like, Sky Turtle's other ability. Yeah. And then you have, uh, you get to play, um, Faithful Mending mm -hmm. as a way to get this in your graveyard. And, uh, what's his name? Uh, the Modern Age. Mm -hmm. Or you're, like, red, because Fable of the Mirror Breaker is just the best card in the format. Right. Right, and then you discard your portal to Fable, so you're, like, Jeskai. Yep. Jeskai Portal. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of tough if you're trying to cast White, 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 though. It is, it is, and you don't. I guess you don't have the, the you don't have the the just guy trium. Yeah, that's for my Gloria. I guess Fable does make you a treasure to I to help know. you get to white. Yeah, um, it'd be better if you were like, but you could be like red white, just like white blue splash mm -hmm. or something. Uh, just you know, not a hundred percent sure how this works out, but. We'll figure um, it out, though. Yeah, but like... That sounds like a good deck to play on a Tuesday. It does. You have five... You have five ways to reanimate it. Yeah. Like, that seems, like, so good. Or, I guess you're, like, black, and you, like, you're black-white. Or Mardudu. And you play... You played Lily. Yeah, that's another way to get things in the yard. Get this in the yeah, yard. Yeah, and... Unfortunately, again, like, like, if you play Esper, then you get, you get the Triome. Yeah. Right, so then you, you get Lily, Faithful Mending, this, and then, like, a pile of removal. Mm -hmm. And you just, like, jam removal spells to kill all your opponent's stuff, and then, like, what you decide to leave behind Portal gets. Mm-hmm. And then gets to bring back. The braids in the format, and that just like <laughs> hurts me. Ruins all the fun. Ruins all the fun. Yeah. But like, I think that like some of the channel creatures that like interact, like like turtle, are good for that. And then uh, I don't think there's anything else, right? Like any other cards that really interact. Like I played some pretty sketch cards in that uh that brilliant restoration deck. Yeah. But um let's see here. So I guess you have Turtle. Uh oh, you've got uh what's his name? The twin shot shot sniper. Mm hmm Now it's red, but like it gets to like eat something. Uh, if we're in green, we have that uh, the Tanuki. Mm hmm That ramps you. Ramps you. It only gets a oh, it gets a basic land. So like it can get it can help you with white. Yeah. So like you could be like Bant, probably Bant or like Chess Guy. Mm hmm Bant gets you a Triumph too. Mm hmm So that would be, unless you use both sides of Turtle. So, all right, uh, we got uh, one more artifact to do. 
Okay, what do we got? This is Skitter Beam Battalion. Uh, we yeah. already talked about this in one of the previous episodes, but I thought this card was sweet, so I want to talk about it again. It's uh, nine mana for a 4-4, four, four, or it's prototype, so it's three red-red for a 2-2 two, two, with Trample and Haste. And when Skitter Beam Battalion enters the battlefield, if you cast it, create two tokens that are copies of it. So it's either nine mana for 12-12 twelve, twelve, Trample Haste, or five mana for 6-6 six, six, Trample Haste. Over three bodies, yeah. What if they kill it in response to the trigger? Then does it not have a target to copy? Um, no, because it refers to the card. So even if the card goes away, it still copies like last known information? Yeah. But if they like disfigure it, then last known information is a zero zero? I have no idea. <laughs> it's a good question. Remember, remember the 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 trick. Um, yeah, the walking. If you have a, or no, like Eldrazi mimic. Oh yeah. yeah if yeah. they like went to copy the thought knot seer, they put, you put it on the track that stack. They target thought knot. You kill thought knot with a disfigure or with a dismember. Dismember. Yeah. And then its last known information was a zero zero, so it finishes copying it. Yeah. So I don't know if this works the exact same way. I mean, if you get to nine, this like probably wins you the game. Yeah, I guess I read this wrong at first. I missed the cast it part. Yeah. I really wanted to flicker this thing, but that doesn't work. I mean, yeah. I mean, if you flicker it, you get two tutus and, well, so if you flicker it, it's still referring to the 2-2 version of the card? Oh, no. Oh, that's weird. Yeah, because it's a different card, so it's no longer... It's targeting the 2-2 version of the card. Yeah. Right, so you'd still get a 4-4 four, four, and two 2-2s. Two, if you Correct. spent, like... If you had, like, 6 mana, yep. and you went, like, 3 red-red, and then ephemerated it. Yeah. Yeah, like... I don't, I don't know, like... When they put the safety, the guardrails on of, like, when you cast it, like, just, just let me, like, have my fun. <laughs> yeah. Like, let me do the work to put this card in my graveyard and then pay white, 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 white in one to yeah. reanimate it. Yeah. Not just like, oh, nope, you can't do that. That would be too much fun. Yeah. Um, is this something, what, what else casts does the ult the ultimatum doesn't cast, right? Which ultimatum? Um, the Sultai one. Uh, it casts, but you can't get this. Oh, cause it only gets monocolored. Monocolored cards. Yep. Hmm. Oh, also if we're portaling. And we're black, you also get Mirror Shell Crab. Oh, yeah, that's a good so you one. You get a three mana canter spell. Yep. That you can then get back after you make your opponent, like, what was that card that was like four black, black target player sacrifices three creatures, or each opponent sacrifice, each player sacrifices three creatures? Taste mm. of something. I don't remember that. Right, after, after you do that to them, you get to get back a Mirror Shell Crab. <laughs> See, I'll, I'll I'll take that one for a Tuesday play a play a, like constructed deck. We'll yeah. we'll we'll put that together. <laughs> um, yeah, like the guardrails are fine. I don't know, but like if you're gonna go to all the work to like put this in the graveyard and reanimate it, like let me like have fun and do the thing. Yeah, I, I guess I don't know what else you do with this thing. Yeah, other than like Tron or you know some giant mana deck, but I think there's better things at nine mana to do. Yeah, I agree. I think like I think the cityscape leveler is probably better at yeah. eight mana because you know you're gonna get something. Yeah. It'd be different, like again, like if it's like when you cast like I understand that like cast triggers are dangerous because you don't have any like interaction with them. Mm -hmm. But like 
if you get to nine mana, like just give me the two two the two four fours guaranteed if you're gonna make it so I have to cast it. Yeah. Right? Like just make like when you cast this, make two copies of this spell. Right. Right? Uh as opposed to when it enters the battlefield, so it doesn't get countered. So it resolves. Yeah. But you can't cheat it into play. We don't want that. Yep. Not like to have any now. fun. Yeah, come on now. Like, if you're not going to let me cheat it into play, at least pay me for getting to nine mana. Right. Don't let me get to nine mana and then, like, eat, uh, what was that card? Deconstruct or whatever? Yeah. Exactly. Let me eat a two mana counter spell? Like, come on now. Yeah. Like, that's just not right. Right, like right. Emrakul's like you got the fifteen mana. I can't be countered. Get that garbage <laughs> out of here. Yeah, I mean nine, this is like you got the nine mana. Be fifteen mana. Yeah, you got the nine mana. Nope. Done. Yep. All right. What else we got? We got what is, uh, what is our two cards for Grease Fang. Ah uh, yes, these are mine. Yep. So there are two cards that reanimate things uh, three CMC or less or sorry, three mana value or less uh, recommission in white is one of the white return target uh, artifact or creature card with mana value three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield that creature, if the, if a creature comes into play this way, put a plus one plus one counter on it uh, and then no one left behind this as uh, four and a black the spell costs three less to cast if it targets a creature card with mana value three or less. Return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield. Mm-hmm. Right? Grease Fang costs three. Yep. Um, uh, what uh, can't stay away is black white. Yep. These are both kind of like one color. Now, can't stay away has flashback, which is a huge upside when you're self milling. Right. But these are also these are just ways that you could. Right, build like have. Yeah, I can't stay away. Number five, or like be a little bit easier on your mana if you're more like white green, splashing grease fang. Right, as opposed to being black white splashing chariot. Right, and I guess grizzly salvage. So just cards to keep in mind that like exist and can do the thing for grease fang. Yeah. Also, recommissions a common, so that's uh. Notable mm-hmm. as well. Yeah. And then we got one more, well, five more cards, but kind of all is one. Um, mm-hmm. We already talked about these a little bit, um, so I don't think we have to spend a ton of time here. But uh, somebody in Discord wanted us to talk about the commands. Um, We went over, we kind of went through them, I don't know, a couple episodes ago and gave our initial impressions have have our impressions changed at all or any of these any good um i don't think so yeah i don't i don't right, think like, any of them are right like the white one three mana make a two two okay who cares put a counter on a creature you control it gains double strike so you can't blow someone out if they don't block because this is a sorcery right so it's like, hey, chump block this one. Thanks for the heads up. Yeah. Um, what's the search your library for a basic planes card, uh, put it in your hand and shuffle, like, no. And then you gain two life and scry two. Like none of those are good. Yeah. Not not right, for like that mana at sorcery speed. Yeah. Right. The blue one's kind of the same way, like none of the stuff like adds up to four mana. Yeah. It's at least an instant. Yeah. Right? Like, so you could, like, surprise someone with, like, a, a construct. Mm-hmm. But, like, it's not, like, you're not getting hype for this for four mana. Like, like depending on how big the construct is, like, a flash 4-4 four, four that then draws a card would be good for four. But, like, it's not going to be that big in standard. Right. Uh, I don't know what they were doing with Gix's command. It just seems bad. Yeah, that card's just not good. Yeah, I don't have any idea what they were thinking. People have been saying like it's sad that Gix's command is not even the best rare with the with the name Gix on it. 
in standard. Yeah. Because, like, uh, Gix's cruelty is better. Right. Yeah, so none of these seem good. Like, it seems like they, like, pulled back really far. Yeah. To be, like, safe. Yeah. And it's weird because they've just been designing cards for the longest time that are just... No one thought if they would be safe at all. They were just, like, YOLO. And then they got to these and they were like, let's make them all unplayable. <laughs> yeah, it's weird. Like, Titiana's command... Or... Titania's command is uh like the same cost as Primal Command, and mm -hmm. nowhere near as good or as fun as Primal Command. Yeah, like exile a graveyard, you gain one life for each card exiled this way for six mana. You're dead if they're using your their graveyard, and you got to six mana and a sorcery speed. So like yeah, they have full use of their graveyard. And then search your library for up to two land cards and put them onto the battlefield tapped and shuffle. Uh, I get to do that for four mana uh, with my and make two tree people. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Like, hey, you made it to six mana. Congratulations. Do you need to get to eight? Yeah. No, not really. Create two, two, two green bears. Who cares? Yeah. And put. So, put two plus one plus one counters on each creature you control. In. That one's good. If you've gone wide. It, but, I mean, it's six mana, though. Oh, it's six mana. Agreed. I guess you could make two four fours, which is still bad. Yeah. Considering, what, like, the, uh, the green invoke made two four fives mm -hmm. with ability words on them for uh, five mana. Yep. Yeah. Well, what was... Um... What was the card from Dominaria United that made? Oh, um, that made a bunch of three threes yeah. with domain. Yeah. Be something. Yeah. Yeah, that was seven, but it made like five three threes if you built your deck right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, this. It just feels like they just made them all a little too safe. Yeah, I think so too. And like, it is, it is hard because like if they like you know, turn the knobs on these too hard that they just, like, take over the format. Yeah. And if they turn the knobs not, you know, if they turn the knobs like they do here, like, no one plays them. Yep. Like, they will wreck you in a limited game, and then you'll never see them again. Yep. Where, like, the the dragon's commands, like, they all, like, still see, like, they still see play. Mm-hmm. Right? Colagun's command, a lot of play. Dramoka's command, like, fringe. Atarka's command, fringe. And then the two higher mana value ones, not at all. Right. But, like, these are, like, both weak and, for the most part, a lot of mana. Yes. And so it's just, like, a bad combination to see any play. Yep. So this is sad. It is. Um, yeah. I guess my impressions are my impressions haven't changed. I don't think they're any good. Yeah. And like, okay, Mishra's command target creature gets plus X plus O and gains haste until end of turn. What? <laughs> so I have a creature. I've played a creature that doesn't have haste. Now I have to play red and X to give it haste. No, it doesn't get trample as well. It just gets haste. So I guess this is one mana give a give a creature haste. Like I feel like that card draws a card, right? I feel like we have that card, yeah. and it draws a card. Expedite, right? Yep. So like this is like bad expedite. So yep. yeah, boo. Yep. And then uh, there was one more thing that was uh something that Discord wanted us to go over, and that was just okay. the power stones. Um, okay. but I think we've talked about them on and off throughout this whole episode, yeah. so I don't know that we need to go super in depth there. Um, so I mean, quick reminder, right? They they're a token artifact that taps for a mana, but that mana can only be used for basically two things: to cast artifact spells and to activate abilities. Mm -hmm. Pay costs, right? Pay costs, right? Yeah. So you know those like you can't use it to cast your planeswalkers you can't use it to like cast your commands only artifact spells and then 
to like you know three in a red you can pay the three colorless mana or generic mana yep so uh, with your something power like stone. unearth if it was unearth three in a red mm -hmm. the three could be or if you had um I don't, like an activated ability of a creature that was like mm -hmm. it, like the invokers were like seven in a green something gets giant until end of turn like the seven could yeah. be made from power stone mana um what about like ward um like ward three i you, think you can pay ward with with it because i also think it's not can. casting a spell it's paying it's paying a cost yep so i think that it is it is fine and um, like channel abilities you can use power mm -hmm. stones for i do believe so yep or cycling um, costs Mm -hmm. So any like activated ability. Yep. The thing is, and like unless you're playing limited, I don't know how much of this is like how much of these are priced to move. Well, so I think like the specific question was more about another piece of cardboard. Like the value of another piece oh. of cardboard. So in terms of like another piece of cardboard, yep. right? You have the Right, like we have found repeatedly that having another piece of cardboard matters. Mm -hmm. Right, maybe it doesn't matter in this set, but we have like again whatever that green red, uh, uh, what's it called? Green red creature is from, um, Mira or whatever. Dominator United, Mira or whatever. Yeah, yeah, Mira Scholar of Antiquity. Right, yeah. tap and untap. Oh, never mind. It's tap an untapped non-token artifact you control oh, at green. Already then. So like they it they are not about either. that. And it's tap two non-token artifacts you control exile. Yeah. So it doesn't work with power stone. So never mind. I am sorry that I talked about Mira in a light that was not terrible. Yeah. Um I think that but like my take on them is that we found I think blood tokens taught us that even if the token isn't super impactful by itself the fact that it's a piece of cardboard matters as long as it's created at the proper rate mm -hmm. um i think the problem with power stones is m most of them aren't created at the pop proper rate like the most of the the ability of the power stone i think is a little bit more powerful than a blood token but Probably the like we like to say the cost is baked into the the token maker. Yeah, like they were. Like we talked about like with the cave zombies, they just forgot to like price in the fact that you were getting a piece of cardboard that was like a garbage tutu. Yep. Like they were just like mind rot is three mana it gives you a decay zombie, and it's like okay, well that decay zombie was worth like half a mana to a full mana. Right. And they just didn't price that in. These, I feel like a lot of them, they they price them in by turning some num like turning some dials on the card. Mm -hmm. So right, like Argothian Opportunist is two and a green for a three two makes a power stone when it enters the battlefield. Right? Like if it didn't make a power stone it's a three three. Right, so they took, they got the mana back or the part of the mana back for the power stone, on the on the toughness. Mm -hmm. There's a couple things that like excavation explosion, two and a red deal three to any target, make a power stone. That card oftentimes is an instant. It's a sorcery. Yep. Right, so they brought they caught the power stone. They got the Power Stone's mana back by making it a sorcery instead of an instant. Yep. So, they aren't free. There's a few that are kind of close to free, like a uh, Horn Stone Seeker. The 2-2 two -two that, like, ETBs makes a Power Stone, but if it dies, you sack a Power Stone. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it, like, it's... It's a two-two with menace, like that's just a fine card, and it gives you a it gives you a temporary power stone. Mm -hmm. Like that one's not priced in as much. Right, that one is free if it stays around. 
Yeah, and like if you're trying to make use of the cardboard, then hopefully you sacrifice your power stones before it leaves the battlefield. Mm -hmm. There's the, uh, oh, what is it, Reckoner's Bargain? The like one in a black sack creature and artifact gain power, gain life equal to its casting cost. Yep. Right? Right, like that just says like feed me power stones, I'll draw you two cards. Yep. Right, so you can use like power stones in that regard. But yeah, they're not as free as they were in uh uh as they've made some of the cardboard in other sets. Like like think about the blood token on a blood tithe harvester. Like it's a two mana three, three. Yeah, a two mana three two is like above rate. Above rate. And then it gets you a blood token and it happens to be a removal spell. Yep. Like that one's just like totally free, makes no sense. These they've kinda tried to balance them. Mm-hmm. And so there are none that you're like, oh, hey, this power stone is just like a gimme. Yep. So because they're not just a gimme, they probably don't make it unconstructed. Yeah, I don't think so. Unless there's like very specifically like, yo, like I can have a deck that I'm jamming cityscape levelers on turn like five every single game. Yeah. And I just need power stones to do it. I think then, you're probably like, more likely to do that with uh, Awake in the Woods than Power Stones, though. Oh, probably. But, like, that ceiling is like, hey, I need a way to ramp into giant artifact monster yeah. that they've given me in this set. So I'm going to use Power Stones to do that. But that more than likely is not going to work. Yep. Right? Especially with, you know, Temporal Lockdown... Right. The, whatever the 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 one red red like destroy all artifacts yeah card and uh our weird vindicate that would eat all your power stones yep right like you're just not gonna get to like put like 12 power stones on the battlefield and just go nuts right and i don't think like we don't have any like great like mana sinks i guess there's like a seven mana draw two cards mm -hmm. that's in blue that, like, maybe would work, but I just don't think there's a bunch of, like, uh, cards to dump all this extra mana from Power Stones in. Yeah, I don't think so either. So, I don't think they're going to be good enough for, uh, what's it called? For Constructed. constructed. I mean, the Decayed Zombies were, like, free, but not, but they themselves weren't good enough for Constructed. Right. I think the power stones are powerful enough for constructed, but they they cost too much on the cards. Yep, I agree. I think we are on Yay. the same page. We did it. We agreed. <laughs> we usually agree. We usually agree. Yeah. Um. So yeah, is that everything? Did we get it all. That is everything. I think we have a show. I think we have a show. We have a two hundredth show. We do. That was a doozy too. That was a. It was two hour plus. Two and a half hours. Imagine if we would have had hours. the other show tacked on here. We would not have finished. We would not have finished. So, uh, with all that, um, if you want to reach out to us, tell us what cards we missed, what cards you're excited about. Uh, you can find all of our social media stuff, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Discord, all that jazz in the description below. Yep. If you're looking to support the show, there's two ways you can do it. The first is our TCG Player affiliate link, tcg.casualtryhardmtg.com. Head on over there using that link and buy some Sweet Brothers War singles and you'll help support the show. Any purchase you make, we'll get a percentage of to help pay all our fees. Uh, if you want to support us more directly, Patreon.com is how you can do that. Uh, Patreon.com slash CasualTryHardMTG. Sign up to be a patron, chip a couple bucks in. You get access to a little bit of extra content from us. You get an extra show. Uh, you get to listen to our pre-show. You get access to our show notes. And you get put on my mailing list for when I have cool stuff to send out to you guys. And you get to support the show. That's the best the best part. The best part is supporting the show. That's right. It's the friends we made along the way. That's right. That's all that matters. All that matters. Yeah. All right. So with that, we'll catch you on the internet. We'll catch you on the internet. <laughs> <laughs>